the year and pretty much lived up to it. Coaches Bobby Bowden and Dennis Erickson led the breath holding as a 34 yard field goal just missed and Miami won 17 16 going on to share the national championship. Bobby Bowden was shocked. Dennis Erickson exultant. Now we come to 92. Florida State ranked third in the nation, led by new quarterback Charlie Ward, who had eight interceptions in his first 57 pass attempts, but only one in his last 74. Seminoles are undefeated. 1992, Miami's toughest opponent has been a hurricane named Andrew. But Gino Toretta is still the man at quarterback and still completing big play passes to a core of catchers for the Canes, catchers that can outrun daylight. And Kevin Williams is still at Miami, showing off the fastest two-step in the game today. The Canes are undefeated, ranked number two. 91 may have been great, but 92 ain't bad, even before they play the game. ABC Sports College Football today offers a CFA matchup between the Florida State Seminoles and the Miami Hurricanes. Coming to you from the Orange Bowl. Actually, today here on ABC Sports, you'll see the top four teams in the country. Number two and three here. Then out west in Seattle, number one, Washington against Southern California follows this game in much of the country. Up in Big Ten country, number four, Michigan will be at home with Iowa. Now in that second game today, if you want to see the game that you're not getting free in your area, call your local cable operator and see if you can't get it on pay-per-view and you can watch them both and have a big afternoon of college football. Now this rivalry between Miami and Florida State has only been going on for 36 years. That's relatively young, in a game 36 today. But the intensity that surrounds it is almost suffocating because it almost always seems to have great meaning, particularly over the last decade. Just like last year, to today's game winner will have a great deal to say about who is ranked number one next January. Now, what about this ball game? What is the principal factor, and where will it apply in the outcome of the game? Okay, the coaches said this yesterday. Both teams went into this season having to rebuild offensive lines, and uh, the one that gets it built the fastest, the one that can get it built best in the next four quarters, got a good chance to win that game. It's going to be a game in two areas, I think, which, whichever offensive front plays the best because we're both rather inexperienced. And then in a game like this, as all of them, it's turnovers and who doesn't turn the football over and, uh, and uh, the guy that turns over the most is probably going to get beat. Miami leads the series 21-14, to 14, but Florida State has done better here in the Orange Bowl than at home. They've won 12 of their 14 games here. We'll be back in the Orange Bowl after our regular feature on what's new in the world of sports science and technology. And a word from our ABC station. Very humid, as you can see, and there is the possibility of a shower passing by. Let's hope it just passes by. The Miami Hurricanes and the Florida State Seminoles, both undefeated, ranked two and three in the country, and here come the Canes into the Orange Bowl. see both coaches spoke worriedly about their offensive line, which I think translates into a worry about the other team's defense. Well, that's true. I think the coaches are, are, have a right to be concerned about the offensive lines because the defenses in this game could be dominant. For Florida State, their middle linebacker, All-American Marvin Jones, is an outstanding player, leads the team in tackles. He plays behind an, a defensive line that can be dominant, headed by the firm of Footman and Freeman, they'll be chasing Toretta all afternoon. For Miami, they have to deal with the loss of their All-American defensive end, Rusty Medeiros, hurt last week, out for the season with a knee injury. You talk about scoring defense, Miami leads the nation in not allowing points on the board. Outstanding group of linebackers, very quick, very fast. Darren Smith is the leader of that group. 
You talk about offense, there's a lot of bells and whistles. You talk about the defense, they have the hammer. But the key to this game is the offensive lines. In a phrase, it's a day for the big ugly. The longest win streak in Division 1A on the line today, 21 in a row by Miami. Players in college football was injured in last week's 8 7 win Miami over Arizona. Defensive end Rustin Madeiras, but he came to the clubhouse today on crutches and had a word with his teammates. Jack Aruth was there, and this is what Rusty had to say. I'm going to tell them they got a chance that. Uh, a lot of people don't. A lot of people that they played with through the years don't. A lot of people that, that played in the NFL don't now have, like Jer Jerome and Shane, and that I don't. And I'm going to tell them to throw their body around on the field with reckless abandon and without any regard for personal injury. It's good to see you here. Okay, you too. Thanks. He must have stirred them up because when the Canes came out, boy, there were nobody was touching the ground. They're sky high. They looked awful last week, as their coach described uh, their uh, performance against the, the Arizona Wildcats. But as you see there, Dennis Erickson has done pretty well with his Miami Hurricanes since he came down to Florida from the Pacific Northwest. Bobby Bowden, on the other hand, has done pretty well himself, except against Miami. As he said last year, when they put my tombstone over my final resting place, they're going to inscribe it. He had to play Miami. The deep receivers for Florida State, which will have the ball first, Tamaric Vanover, he is a wide out, a very exciting player, returned one last week against Wake Forest for 96 yards. He's joined back there by number 33, Tiger, Tiger McMillan, and Dane Pruitt will kick it off. So the game is on as the Canes have the wind at their back. Seminole's looking into it. Here comes Vanover getting to the outside. Look out! One man. He's gone, but there's a penalty flag on the field. Hold the phone. Hold on. There's a penalty flag. Miami player is also down on the field, but that one may come back. Tamaric Vanover had a 96 yarder last week. He just went 94 yards in the opening kickoff of this week's game, but this one may come back because of the penalty flag. The flag was thrown at the 35 yard line. It's against Miami. The touchdown is going to stand. So Florida State electrifying people with the third 94 yard touchdown return by Tamaric Vanover. The second week in a row he has come up with a big one and uh, the Seminoles are on the board six to nothing. So look at the injured man that's carry a defensive back. He's up walking, but Keith, a lot of big players on this field, both sides. You've got explosives everywhere, and you saw one on the opening kickoff. When Vanover got outside, he had two people to beat. He just ran away from both of them. So he's long-legged. He's a baby. But, boy, he can run. Here's your extra point try now by Dan Mowry, and it is good. Mowry last year missed eight conversions, but he's having a much better season this year. And let's go back to the electrifying run by Vanover. Take a look to the left of your screen. Florida State's going to set up a wall to the left side. Now pick up some guy right, right there as a block. Look at the two Seminoles to the left side. Now he sneaks between a couple of Hurricanes, and he's just going to outrun the kicker who tries to trip him. That got your flag. The, the attempt the attempt to trip by the kicker was what brought the flag out of the pocket of the official. Gimmicks and big plays. This is a dead return left all the way. All of the Hurricanes were knocked to their left side. And Vanover, who has outstanding speed, just a true freshman, almost came to the University of Miami. There was the attempted kick, but he was almost a Hurricane from Tallahassee and signed at the last minute with the Seminoles. 
So young Vanover has, uh, I think, put himself in the record books with those two returns, and uh, the penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. So Florida State will kick it away from midfield. And in the meantime, uh, Tamaric doesn't even look winded. A big boost, Keith, for the for the morale of Here. Florida State coming in here, and a big downer for the Hurricanes. They've only given up two touchdowns in three games. Of course, neither one of those were on special teams. I just think the scheme, Keith, on that kickoff was was what caused that touchdown and the speed of this young man. Wasn't poor tackling, good execution by the Seminoles. Now Maury will kick it away for Florida State. Knocks it, obviously, into the end zone, and it's put down there by Kevin Williams. Williams, uh, for a moment, looked up as if he might try to come from five yards deep, but they told him, sit down and be quiet, and we'll take it at the 20. And Gino Toretta comes out at quarterback, 6'3", 205. Remarkable record as a starter at quarterback for the Miami Hurricanes. Add one national championship to that 18 and one record. And the Canes will go to work with this alignment. Kevin Williams, we've got him listed at wide out because that's where he plays an awful lot of the time. But the big name there is number 30, Stephen McGuire, who is back starting, coming off uh, rehab from knee surgery. It's a pass. Toretta to the sideline. Pass is good to Copeland. Up around the 26-yard line, Clifton Abraham just barely got a hold of him. I mean, Copeland was very close to holding it big the other way. The diehard starting lineup offensively up front. Etheridge is a 236-pound tackle. Now, remember that. He is a tight end that's moved to the position because of injury. Mario Cristobal comes back from injury, and he is a senior with experience and 280 pounds. That'll be close to a first down as Stephen McGuire, the senior out of Brooklyn, carries. Derek Brooks brings it down. The defensive unit features a couple of guys uh, at defensive end for Florida State that are really good. Freeman came back this year and beat out Sterling Palmer for that starting uh, defensive end position. And when you do that, you're pretty good. So is Marvin Jones playing the middle in that linebacker core. Corey Sawyer with four interceptions. First down. Pass is drilled up to the 95 by Toretta and caught by Lamar Thomas, the senior from Gainesville. And so Miami uh, going very much with what they have been going with ever since Dennis Erickson showed up at, on the campus. Quick passing, Keith. First two passes, Toretta and his wide receivers getting off the quick pass. They want to play the game on the perimeter. Wide receiver against defensive back. They don't want to drop back and let that defensive line dominate their young offensive line. You double at the bottom of the picture, one wide at the top. Toretta, little four-yard drop. Pass is complete to Kevin Williams, and Williams is drilled right around the 40. Toretta, and Toretta has now passed Bernie Kozar as the Kevin fifth all-time uh, yardage gainer at the Kevin University of Miami. First down, Hurricanes. They give him the mark on the play, and uh, it'll put it on the 40 and call it first down. First and 10 at the 40. Take a look at their strengths. As I mentioned, wide receivers for the Hurricanes, they want to play on the perimeter against the DBs. For Florida State, that front seven, the front four, and the three linebackers are outstanding. They want to put some pressure on Toretta. On first down from the 40, he picked up two first downs in a row. He takes this one, pops to Copeland. He's got it, and he fumbles the football. It is picked up by Florida State. You can return it. Clifton Abraham has it. And he is brought down at the 21-yard line. Copeland, running out of bounds, fumbled the football. The ball never went out of bounds. Now, whether or not Copeland uh, had possession when he went out of bounds, that's what Miami's coaches are arguing about down on the sidelines. But so far, the call stands. Well, they tried a little hitch and goal this time. They've been throwing all these short passes. Copeland was out of bounds, was allowed to come back in. I don't think he ever had possession of the ball. Ball was knocked loose. It stayed in bounds. He went out of bounds. 
The uh, officials are all ACC, in case you wonder where they come from. Florida State's a member of the ACC. Miami is a member of the Big East. The contract reads this way. It is Florida State ball, first down, off at their 22-yard line. Two big plays so far, and here's the penalty play. And that's probably too much time. New quarterback, Charlie Ward, in there, remember. And uh, the crowd may have gotten to him. This is one of the loudest places you can ever Football. possibly want to play a game. All start. All start on uh, Florida State. Let's take another look at that last the reception and fumble. In college ball, if you're knocked out, you can come right back in. Come right back in. In pros, you could not do this. Now, let's see if he catches it and has possession of it. at the 17-yard line. I don't, no, I don't he think he ever had, had possession, no. but if he did have possession and ruled by the official, it was a legitimate fumble, yep. but he never had possession. First down, however, call it the 17 now after the five-yard uh, penalty. Charlie Ward is trying to check off, it looks like. Called the play from the line of scrimmage. You can't do that down in that end of the orange bowl. Little quick hitch pass, thrown out to Canaric and Hanover. He can't possess it as he takes a lick from Ryan McNeil. Charlie Ward, the quarterback, number 17, of course, was the point guard for Pat Kennedy's basketball team at Florida State. So crowd noise is not going to bother him a whole lot. And you saw the interception story there. Now, Vanover, you already heard a lot about, except we didn't tell you exactly where he was from. But uh, you'll know in time, he's from Tallahassee. Along the front, they're pretty green. And uh, their wideouts have great speed. Second down and 15 as Ward turns and hands it off to number 35, Sean Jackson, who is decked behind the line of scrimmage back around the 15-yard line. As we continue the diehard starting lineup for the Florida State Seminoles, there are two redshirt freshmen in the middle of things. The center, Clay Shiver, and Lewis Kyer, the starting left guard. Marvin Farrell comes off uh, injury and gets a little more experience into the lineup this week at Tackle. These guys are going to settle down a minute in a, in a little bit. It gets them going. This is they're playing on adrenaline right here. This crowd has got everybody fired up. 94 yard touchdown return of the opening kickoff by Vanover has given Florida State a seven nothing lead. Because Miami, guessing on the count, comes plowing up the middle. A couple of linebackers took themselves right out of the play, and Sean Jackson has finally run out of bounds across midfield at the Miami 48. Harris Harris finally got him, and this game looks like it's going to be a day of big plays. 37 yards on that one. Well, it's third and 17. The linebackers go to blitz here. Watch these two linemen as they pull and lead around the corner. Florida State backed up. The linebacker blitzes. He's blocked. The two offensive linemen from the backside come around. Gets a nice block there. And a good job of uh, play calling on the side by Brad Scott, the offensive coordinator. Yeah, that one pulling lineman. He took down two keys. Yes, he did. Back goes Ward. Roll it out. Ball down. Lost his footing. They have had some rain. Uh, in fact, it rained this morning quite hard. But the field is in very good shape. The Miami defensive unit with crying. Now, Kevin Patrick now is highlighted because he's the man replacing the injured Rusty Medeiros at the defensive end position. There are your three linebackers. They're all good ones, and Ryan McNeil is the bell cow of the defensive secondary. So the football comes back to the 43-yard line. We're in second down and 19 for the seven -0. pick up one yard on the carry as Jesse Armstead brings him down. As we said a minute ago, this oftentimes is a game of unexpected plays, and Bobby Bowden talked on that point yesterday. There's so many people out there that can make an unexpected play, that can make a big play, you know, a 50-yarder, a 60-yarder, that the shot, you're going this way and all of a sudden it's going that way, I think that's why the unexpected happens so much in this ball game. Back goes Ward on third down and 18. There's pursuit chasing him around, and finally he gets his pass away. It's intercepted. Could be a touchdown here. Nope. Ward knocks out Ryan McNeil. He had a man over the board to help him on the play, but Mark Caesar could never get in front of Charlie uh, Ward and Bucky. Well, that's what, 10 
interceptions now, I guess. Uh, no, eight, uh, nine, ten for uh, Charlie Ward. He had plenty of time to throw this. Got outside the pocket. You're going to see the man is covered. Charlie Ward gets out now. He's going to throw to the top. The top man goes by. Now he's going to slide. But the, the outside defensive back, McNeil, sees the ball also and comes and cuts in front of the receiver. Take a look from behind. That's Fanover, the true freshman, and McNeil, the fifth-year senior. And McNeil makes the play. 7-0 Florida State. 9.43 to go in the first quarter. Miami's ball, first down, Florida State, 35. Donnell Bennett steps up out of the backfield into a wide-out position that gives him four. Toretta. Gino Toretta. He's a big guy. Don't worry about him. He's six foot three, 205 pounds, and he's got a neck and a pair of shoulders like a linebacker. So he's plenty tough enough to run it in traffic. He just showed you he can. But when you go to no backs, Keith, they took McGuire out of the backfield and lined him up wide. A linebacker goes out with him, and they don't think that Toretta's going to run it. Now they've got to add him into the equation. On second down and two. Bennett's short of the first down. Marvin Jones, first man to get a piece of him. 6'2", 235. Everybody down in this part of the country talks about him. This, no gain on from the behind, ball. the center, 51, Terrell, tried, Terrell Green tried to get through. Watch number 51, the center. Tries to throw a cross body block. That's a freshman, redshirt freshman center trying to block an All-American, and the middle linebacker makes the play. Third down, and it's still two. Is that a little quick pop off the hands of Lamar Thomas? The ball was just a fraction high, perhaps, but it's a catch that Thomas had to make, and he didn't do it. Pruitt comes into the ball game for a field goal try. He missed two last week against Arizona. See where they put the tee. It'll be around the 34-yard line. So it's good size at 44 yards, but the wind's at his back. And if there's one gap in the, the two teams, we mentioned the offenses and the defenses, the special teams seem to favor the Seminoles. Good, a first-year kicker. Yard line, Kevin. Tommy Henry blocked it for Florida State. Tommy Henry, number 41. Kevin Brooks on the re, uh, on the recovery and advanced a little bit. Take a look and see if we can find out where it was blocked. Came around the corner. Around the corner. Yep. Nobody touched him. 8-12 to go first quarter. Still 7-0 Florida State. University of Miami. The man that's going to block the kick. Now, take a look here. There's three men on this side of the center and five on the other side. The reason they're doing that is the ball's on the hash mark. Florida State says, all right, let's go over there where you're short, and we'll try to block it from the short side. He comes around, gets a piece of the kick, and if you block the kick, you can hit the uh, kicker. And so the Seminoles have made the big plays so far in the ball game, though they only lead by seven to nothing on Tamaric Vanover's 94-yard return of the opening kickoff. And that's the young man right there that just blocked the kick. The ball rests at the 49-yard line. Tyrant Tiger McMillan is the tailback. Charlie Ward takes it, now pulls it down, and takes off. Dives down to a 43 on the Miami side of the field. Now here's Jack Aroot. Well, Keith, we told you what Rusty Madera said to the Miami Hurricanes. Let me tell you what Coach Bobby Bowden said to the Florida State Seminoles. He said, two concerns I have today. One, save enough for the fourth quarter. It's hot and it's humid out here. And number two, he said, don't be intimidated by the crowd or the antics of the crowd. He said, it's not Tallahassee, but hold your heads high. And hold your chin strap tight. Well, so far, all of the breaks, they've made all of the breaks go their way. Ward on second down and two. Hands inside. Uh, McMillan, 180-pound sophomore from Kissimmee. 
carries for the first down. And so now the Knolls are in position of hosting a threat, leading seven to nothing. Florida State ranked number three in the country. And a lot of people who have been watching them think this team is developing into a better football team than the one they showed off last year. Problem so far, inconsistency at quarterback. Charlie Ward, outstanding yep. first two games, and then the last two previous to this one, not too, I mean, great the last two, and then the bad the first two games, I should say. Yeah, they need an eight interceptions in his first 57 attempts. Solid hit put on time for McMillan by Jesse Armstead, a senior out of Dallas, Texas. That's called a lick. Here's John Saunders, New York. Keith, certainly nothing as wild as what you have in Miami, but a couple of scores to update from early games in the ACC. Georgia Tech, Scott Sisson, a 37-yard field goal. They have a 3-0 lead over NC State. And in the Big East, David Gordon with a 24-yard field goal as Boston College looks for their fifth win and fourth straight shutout. Right now, let's take it back to Keith Jackson. Thank you, John. Second down, 11. Ward back. Pressure coming. Dumps it off. He gets it into the hands of McMillan. Down the sideline goes Tiger close to a first down. They've marked him out across the 30. That will be, I think, a first down. It's a nice job by Charlie Ward looking downfield and then dropping it off to his outlet. Call it the 29, six minutes and 19 seconds to go. First quarter, 7-0 Florida State. The Seminoles are threatening now. Playing the one-back offense. Tiger McMillan is caught behind the line of scrimmage by number 86, Kevin Patrick, who's playing the game in place of Rusty Medeiros. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. Good one, one of the games of the season, I would expect expect it to be the Dallas Cowboys and Philadelphia Eagles huge game in the NFC East it's a nine Eastern on ABC Sports. imagine Jimmy Johnson might be watching this game with a little bit of interest he recruited some of these players are out here on the field he's built his uh, Cowboys the same way he did the, the uh, Hurricanes and that is with speed second down 11 and a half Ward back gets a little heat now the 29. Darren Klein was the first man to get there. He's the other defensive end. So Patrick, number 86, play a go, and now number 91, Darren Klein. Crash through. Take a look at this, the Hurricanes. They've only allowed two touchdowns all year this year coming into the ball game. And it's third down and 10. got a lot of it, but he ran out of real estate around the 23, and that's well short of the first down. So it'll be fourth down, and uh, presumably Maori, the place kicker, into the ball game. Danny Connell, freshman quarterback out of Fort Lauderdale, will hold for him, and Andy Crow will snap it. Maori's a sophomore from Tallahassee. This will be a 40-yard try. He was not the young man who missed the kick a year ago. Not get a 39-yard field goal. It's just inside the 40. 30 plus 10. Block. How do you do? In your face. And uh, the Seminoles are turned away. As Paul White, quarterback, does the job for Miami. Well, we said that the uh, defense has had the hammer. They've blocked two kicks. And every time they've been on the field, they've been dominant. It's the special teams that scored for Florida State. Yeah, but the circumstance uh, was great for a uh, flash, but now it's not so good because the ball rolled dead back at the Miami one-yard line, and that's where they're going to have to possess it. The Lexus Coupe can be equipped with a cellular phone that allows you to dial 
answer and hang up without ever letting go of the wheel. Proving once you get your hands on a Lexus, they tend to stay that way. Excuse me, the printer on your desk there, it's an HB laser jet. Uh, why? Hmm. Never really thought about it. Well, look, somebody obviously thought about it. Somebody with a firm commitment to excellence, right? Probably. Everyone here has an HP laser jet printer. And the fact that you don't think about your HP laser jet kind of proves just how dependable it is, doesn't it? And that's a leading question. Are you an attorney? Uh, are you? Yes. This is a law firm. There you have it, from an attorney at a leading law firm, HP laser jet printers. If it isn't a laser jet, it's only a laser printer. Hey, want to taste a couple of beers? Sure. You bet. So which do you prefer? This one. That's a beer. Here's Budweiser, and this is Coors Extra Gold. Oh, whoa! What if I told you Coors Extra Gold is brewed far longer than Bud? I had no idea. 70% longer. I guess there's surprises all the time. Slow brew for that real beer flavor and color, the way beer was meant to be, which may be why 58% of Bud drinkers prefer Coors Extra Gold. It'd be 90%. Coors Extra Gold. If you're missing real taste, beer is back. Incredible. These are awesome facts. A 7-0 ball game, first quarter, 4-4 to go. Florida State leading. Miami has the ball at their own one after Paul White blocked the uh, punt, uh, the uh, kick. And a blocked field goal try is treated just like a punch, in case you're wondering why it's down dead at the one. That's where it stopped. McGuire lines up in the backfield. Stephen McGuire, he's well in the end zone for Miami, but they've been known to throw it a few times out of here. They don't this time. They give it to McGuire, and he wedges up the three, maybe the four. Middle of the defensive front, finally got a grip on him. We told you when we came on the air today, the games that follow us will be USC at Washington in Seattle. And up in the Big Ten country, you'll have Iowa at Michigan. And you'll see one of those games free and the other one's on pay-per-view. You might as well uh, pop some more corn. <laughs> Second down and seven. Toretta comes out of there. But he really didn't get up a full head of steam. He rolls up around the 10. Eric Smith, an outside linebacker, stayed at home just in case something like that occurred. And he was there to stop him a yard short of the first down. Take a look from in the end zone. Play action fake. Toretta knows he's in the end zone now. The clock is running a little faster for a quarterback. When you're in the end zone, you don't want to get hit from the blind side. And the sack uh, would be a safety. The hole opens up, and he picks up some yardage. It'll be third and short. Third and one. They throw for it. And the man intended was Darrell Spencer, but Toretta was off the mark by a good two yards. A little excited. A little excited. Needs to settle himself down. Charlie Ward is doing a good job. He seems to have himself under control. Toretta seems to be a little bit nervous early in the game. Pretty tender field position back there. Where yes, it was. Looking. And you have to be careful. All right, Paul Snyder is in the punt. Senior out of Laguna Niguel, California. There's no pressure on him, and he gets a pretty good kick away. The wind helping it. Back to the 45-yard line goes Corey Sawyer. And he loses his footing as he tries to plant the cut. 45-yard punt, 7-yard return. 3.09 to go first quarter, and Florida State with the ball leading 7 to nothing. As you read this, I should tell you that a young man named Charlie Ward is wearing number 17 today, who had a great hand in getting the basketball team to the Sweet 16 at Florida State. Probably would have had a hand in, uh, with the baseball team, too, if he'd had the time. Louisiana State was the other university to do that remarkable feat, and that was in 1987. Florida State might very well do it again. They could. Charlie Ward, very quiet, very confident leader. All right, it's first down for the Seminoles. McMillan lines up, now breaks out of the backfield, leaving Ward to throw, looks and looks and has good protection and throws high. The pass was intended for Kes McCorby. McCorby, number 88, a sophomore out of Mississippi. 
Charlie Ward now one of four for 11 yards. That was a big ball game the other night over in Starkville when Mississippi State jumped on Florida. And uh, Jackie Sherrill's ball club also has Alabama coming to town this year. So they're going to they're going to have a hand at who wins what in the uh -huh. SEC. Sean Jackson alone back now. And he's got the ball. Trying to pick his way through there. Number 71, 85, and Kenny Lopez took him down. Jesse Armstead helped him. And no gain on the play. So that's going to bring up a third down and ten. West Virginia in Morgantown has uh, put a touchdown on the board now, breaking Boston College's three-game scoreless defensive string. Third down and ten. Shotgun. Ward trying to take off with it, shakes off one man, gets a block from another man, and he is short of the first down. Bobby Bowden holds his breath. Bobby, in the first three ball games with Charlie Ward at quarterback, felt like he was walking out on the world's biggest patch of ice. <laughs> I mean, he just didn't know what he was going to do. And uh, going to this new offense and getting a man of Ward's ability who can run as well as he can throw, well, everything's new for Bobby. As you say, he's a two-back guy. Always wanted two backs in his backfield. Now they went to one back. They're going to go for it on fourth down inside the Miami 40-yard line. It's fourth down and three. Not one. Not short, but three. Time out. The crowd got into the ball game in a hurry. Charlie Ward didn't feel comfortable with the call and with the noise. It was a little too and much confusion, too, yep. Keith. I mean, yep. you don't want to do that at fourth and four. So the ball rests just inside the 40. You've got a timeout. You've got John Wimberly in to punt now on fourth down and three. You have no running backs in that backfield. You would you'd be suspicious. Uh, William Floyd shows up. So there is somebody back there. He was up there in the tight end position, now steps back, but they snap it to Wimberly. And our suspicions of a trick play from Bobby Bowden are not founded. The punch not very good either, actually. It's out of bounds down at the 12-yard line. Tonight on ABC, a lot of action and adventure starting at 8, 7 Central. Covington Cross starts it. Then Bob Urich stars in Crossroads. And Tony gets involved in a whole mess of things on the commish. That's tonight here on ABC. Stephen McGuire checks into the backfield again now, and every time he shows up, it gives the Miami a faithful heart because they need him. The running game has not been very good for the Hurricanes. And he, so is, far this he has been very good against FSU the last two years, Keith. He's got it. Broke a tackle and will pick up about four yards on the carry, winding up eventually in the grasp of Marvin Jones. And that normally spells grass. In fact, uh, the last couple of years, uh, Mickey Andrews, the defensive coordinator for FSU, has stopped the Miami passing game. But the problem has been Stephen McGuire. Last year, he ran for 142 yards and caught four passes. So he was the main threat for the Hurricanes up in Tallahassee last year. Donnell Bennett checks in now at the running back position with three wide outs. Bottom of your picture, second down, five. Inside a minute to go, first quarter. Coretta's pass, good. Caught by 35, Spencer. Spencer's got a first down. Knocked out of bounds at the 39-yard line. And let's go to John Sonder. Keith in the Big Ten, Wisconsin had first and goal from the five, but they get buried three times, including this on the one-yard line. Settle for the field goal, but lead the Buckeyes 3-0. Keith. That's one of those kind of games that you got to be wary of because you go play in snake pits in the old conference rivalries and yep. uh, they don't like you from another generation yet. <laughs> they don't even know you. They don't like you. Right. Kevin Williams, Jonathan Harris, Horace Copeland, Lamar Thomas all on the field now at the wide positions. Doretta back to throw it. Goes down the middle with it. Coleman Bell, the tight end, is held up on the play. Number 36, Ken Alexander. Uh, blocked his progress downfield, and that seemed to be the man that Toretta was trying to get the ball to. Miami's field position so far in the ball game has been all over the place. They started at the 20, the 35, uh, back at the 1, and then back on the 12. Miami ranked right up there in the top 
in the nation in passing offense. 37 seconds to play in the first quarter. Seminoles leading seven to nothing. Loretta changing his play. And Florida State jumping all over the place. He's got a free play. And his wide receivers quit on him. He had a free play. Florida State stood up. Miami didn't run, didn't go. I think if uh, if Copeland or one of those wide people had taken off, it had been a free touchdown. Well, what happens was when the defensive lineman jumps offside, the center snapped the ball. Watch right here now. As the defensive lineman jumps offside, the center will snap the ball ahead of the snap count. Nobody else will move. You're just from behind, Bob. Take a look at it. From behind. There's the ball snap. Nobody's moving because it's on three, and he snapped it on one. Well, he just knew that the, he'd get five yards by snapping it early. But the point was the Florida State people mm -hmm. gave up on the play. Everybody and stopped. Everybody stopped. That's right. It was a free play. But he didn't have any receivers down there either. <laughs> Nobody went down under it. Toretto's now five out of eight for 72 yards. Ward is one out of four for 11. Smart, smart play there by Terrell Green. Green was a defensive lineman last year. Part of the problem with the offensive line, a lot of shifts. Two defensive linemen came over. They lost three to graduation last year. A couple of guys got hurt. Time for a couple of plays here in the first quarter. It's been a long first quarter. Ball's been flying around, and we've had some big plays, but still only one touchdown, and that on the opening kickoff, 94-yard run by Vanover. Toretta's pass to the sideline to Lamar Thomas. He's got some room, gets away from one, and then he is dragged out of bounds from behind. And Toretta really took a lick. Gino Toretta really got up in it. But it's a big play for Miami. First down at the pressure, State 35. Pressure the quarterback. And blitz coming inside. That's Brooks, number 10. The inside linebacker gets a good shot at him. Defensive linemen were going out, allowing the linebacker to come in. He may have gotten a shot right there that will affect him the rest of the ball game. But he also got his first down at the Florida State 35. 21 seconds to go in the first quarter. Toretta hands it away to Bennett. Big run by Bennett. That'll be another Miami first down at the Seminole 23-yard line. John Davis, the strong safety from Pahokee, Florida. Got the hit. When you're a passing team, Keith, the first thing everybody wants to stop is the pass. So you spread them out, and then you give it to your running backs. They've always been able to run from this one back. Miami had 22 rushes last week against Arizona. They gained two yards. Different story today. After the first quarter of play, Florida State 7, Miami nothing. The first 15 minutes of this ball game uh, took almost an hour to play. 50 minutes to play. And uh, a lot of things happened. So let's take a deep breath and see what we do with the second quarter. Larry Jones checks in now as Miami develops a threat. First down at the Florida State 24-yard line. Coretta back to throw, puts it in the corner. Incomplete intended for Kevin Williams. And that's very good coverage by Clifton Abraham for Florida State. Well, one of the things they like to do is pressure the quarterback. Always keep some pressure on him, Keith. Take a look right here. The defensive back up on the outside is going to blitz. You got man coverage down the sideline, but Toretta doesn't have time. Watch the linebacker blitz from the outside. John Davis, a strong safety. Strong safety blitz. Toretta knows he can't pick him up. That's a low percentage pass. Florida State likes to take those, and Miami says, if we throw enough, we'll hit one. Minute 10 now at the running back spot. Toretta puts this one in the other corner for Williams. Just beyond his reach. That had to be an absolutely perfect pass to work. It was almost incomplete. It goes in the books. We go to John. Keith, Georgia Tech, Sean Jones had gone 122 attempts without being picked off until Sebastian Savage gets in front of this one, his ninth career INT. This one is still 3-0. Back to you, Keith. 
Second quarter of play, 7 0. Seminoles lead the Hurricanes at the Orange Bowl. It's third down and 10 from the Florida State 24. He looks for Thomas. He got him. Lamar Thomas. The winner, going to Thomas Sawyer. Thomas cut right in front of Corey Sawyer, the man with four interceptions on the season, and made the catch. Three straight blitzes in a row. 55 is the middle linebacker, Jones. The offensive line and the backs pick it up. Toretta sees it, gets rid of the ball before he was in his break. That's why the ball was a tad behind him. Florida State, three straight blitzes in that series, Keith. First down just outside the 10-yard line of Florida State. Miami's first threat of the day. First real threat of the day. to the five-yard line, six-yard line to A.C. Tellison, who makes a very difficult catch and managed to control it. Let's pause five seconds here to allow our ABC station to tell you who they are. This is WFTV, Channel 9, Orlando. Ball rest just short of the five, so that's a pickup of about five. And it's second down. Since Miami has crossed the Florida State 30-yard line, they blitz four times in a row. Handed off to McGuire, and McGuire is taken down instantly by John Davis, the strong safety, who was lined up in a blitz position again, but didn't come. Take a look at the Hurricanes and what they've done inside the 20. They scored 11 of the 16 times down there. Nine of nine of those 11 were touchdowns. And here's Florida State defensively. Eight times, eight situations. They've allowed only three touchdowns and two field goals. They're blitzing. Toretta knows he doesn't have much time. Of course, Fuller and Florida State know that that's the route they like to throw in that situation, so he was ready for it. So Dane Pruitt is in. He had a 44-yard drive block. He gets this one airborne, and it's right down the highway. Big score there. The line. It is. That would have been a huge lift for the Seminoles if they'd have turned them away. But it is now 7-3, Florida State. Hitachi? Wait, I know, I know. They make... Look, your favorite show. <gasps> oh. Hitachi okay. makes big screen TVs and 20,000 other entertaining products. Hitachi. Hitachi? Uh, they make, um... Actually, I'm kind of busy right now working on a big project. Hitachi makes computer systems and 20,000 other intelligent products. Hitachi. To those who still believe that only expensive luxury cars should offer standard anti-lock brakes, a driver's side airbag, and sophisticated engine technology, we think you'll come around. The Civic EX Sedan from Honda. It's a big investment. Get the most out of it. Change the oil every 3,000 miles. And do it yourself with quality Pennzoil motor oil from Walmart. Only Pennzoil promises performance, protection, quality. And only Walmart gives you Walmart savings every day of the year. Every 3,000 miles, put fresh oil in your car. But first, come to Walmart and put Pennzoil in your cart. Your car will last longer. Your budget will, too. Walmart. Always. National powers collide. The Miami Hurricanes storm into Penn State for a high noon showdown with the eight-rack Nittany Lions next Saturday on ABC's College Football. 
They go 81 yards on 12 plays, and this was the bid for the touchdown. Toretta throwing off his back Fuller foot, State. but Fuller, the defensive back, just makes an outstanding play. And number 80. They come away with three points. It's a seven to three ball game now. As Pruitt hit the 24 yard field goal and it's Vanover and McMillan deep. Vanover of course went 80 and 94 yards in the opening kickoff. For the and they kick it right to it. Typical. <laughs> Here you are. Do it again Buster. Taken down short of the 15 yard line. These two teams really get at each other, boy. I'm telling you. It's just one dare, one stare after another. Coming up right after our ball game, USC Washington for many of you. Iowa and Michigan in Big Ten country. Huskies ranked number one this past week. And uh, if you'd like to see the game that is not being shown free in your area, have a crack at pay-per-view. 8.95. Take a look. Take a look. <laughs> Now one out of four, 11 uh, yards in the ball game. Been hit three times of those uh, four times he's attempted to throw. Keith, so they're putting good pressure on him. Sean Jackson lines up behind him as Florida State goes to the one-back offense in 1992. A lot of time for Ward this time over the middle. Pass was on the hands of the intended receiver, Kez McCorby. But McCorby was just leveled by the Canes, and in particular, Terrace Harris. From behind the defense, this ball is going to be coming right at you. First down passing. Everybody's to the right side. Three receivers. Charlie Ward looks now. Number uh, six right there, Terrace Harris, playing center field, sees it coming all the way. Comparison of the two quarterbacks so far. Toretta getting the best of them. Second down and ten. One to 14. Defense is now swarming. Let us quickly go to New York and John. Keith, Boston College had three straight shutouts, but West Virginia has solved the mystery. Adrian Morrell, 16 yards here, their second touchdown of the game. They lead BC 14 3. Keith. Third down. Man, I didn't think BC would have an easy time of it down in Morgantown. You seldom do. Don Nealon. Pretty resourceful fellow. 12 minutes to go in the first half, 7 to 3 ball game here in the Orange Bowl, third down and 12. And Charlie Ward pulls it down and takes off, runs into three fellows wearing orange. Michael Barrow, Casey Greer, and Darren Smith. And uh, you're not going to travel very far with those fellows. And he had a great. And he had a quick ejection, too, uh, Keith, from the pocket. One defensive lineman was in there, and Charlie Ward took off. You can make that when it's fourth and third and four or five or six, but 12 yards is a lot to pick up. So they'll punt it. Kevin Williams will go back to return it. John Wimberley. His first punt was a 28 yarder. It was a pooch kick. This one, John gets some spin on it. Kicks it away from Kevin Williams. Gets it to tail drag a little and gets about a 12, 15 yard roll on it. A 49 yard punt. The wind that is back. So the Hurricanes will come out of it with pretty good field position. 11.06 to go in the first half. And trailing by four. I know that uh, many of the stories coming out of this part of South Florida have been dreadful because of Hurricane Andrew, but some of the operations of the city and the port are back to normal. You know that more cruise passengers go out of this port than any other port in the world. More than three million a year. And now there are a few times myself. From the 31-yard line, Toretta dumps it off to Donnell Bennett. Bennett gets a block on the corner and picks up seven yards. Toretta complete to Here's Jack Aroot. Keith, you mentioned the fact that the humidity factor is oppressive here. In fact, we also told you that Bowden's concerned about their guys wilting. Here's what they've brought down here is a cool suit derivative. It's an ice pack. What they do is they take it and put it on top of their heads when they come off the play and try and cool down. Does it work? Yeah, it does. Can you borrow one for us? I got two on their way up. <laughs> Second down and three. 
Uh oh, that's a messy sort of a thing. The handoff was almost fumbled as uh, Toretta gave it to McGuire, and they will be stopped short of the first down. I'll say one thing: that if you're a Hurricane football fan, you got to be dipped at the end of the season. Of course, the speakers are the loudest in the world, and uh, all of the sound catches back into the Orange Bowl, and the place just barely cracks. Well, that's, sound. That could be one of the reasons why they've won 47 straight here. Virginia, George Welch's team. That's pretty good. Florida State's got to go up there at the end of October and play in Charlottesville. Could be a very big ball game in the ACC. Third down and three. Coretta looks for Harris. Now wants to go deep, and he's got a man out there. But Lamar Thomas cannot get to it. That was a very good play by John Davis. John Davis has made three big plays in this ball game, and there was one right there because he simply refused to let Lamar Thomas have access to the ball, and he did it legally. Davis is a big guy now. He's 6'2", 225 pounds, so you're not going to shove him around. Strong safety. Corey Sawyer is number eight, the punt returner. As Miami has to get rid of it before there was some heat on the kicker. No penalty. They knocked him down, but they got the ball out of there. The fair catch is called by Sawyer. Back around the 15-yard line. 7-3. to three, Florida State leads, and they have the ball now. The Honda Scholar Athlete of the Week brought to you by American Honda, supporting amateur athletics. Darren Smith, fifth-year senior linebacker, University of Miami, is the winner this week. Honda presenting a check for $3,000 to the General Scholarship Fund of the University of Miami in Darren Smith's name. He's uh, doing MBA work right now. He's already graduated. He's grade point 3.2. Five graduate students on this Miami team. And the NFL will be interested in him, Keith. He's an outstanding linebacker. All right, here's Charlie Ward now. Has yet to uncrank at nine and a half minutes to go in the first half. His folks lead 7-3, almost fumbles the snap, but gets it off, and the pass is incomplete. He had Shannon Baker wide open, but he doesn't hit him. Now they want to go uh, with no huddle, look like, and they're going to. They're only trying to get everybody in place, but nobody knows quite what to do. This is a new offense for Florida State. Coming into the ball game, this is who Charlie Ward was going to. The wide receivers have caught 86% of the passes. Tight ends only 1%. Out of the shotgun, pressure coming, and Ward's down. Number 86, Kevin Patrick, his second sack of the game. For the second time, he's got the quarterback his first sack. As we told you back in the first quarter, that was the man that replaced Rustin Madaris and asked Dennis Erickson yesterday about the quality of Patrick's play, and he says he's not far behind Rustin. Well, he was a starter last year, formerly a tight end. Patrick just gets in. Charlie Ward makes a move, but uh, just enough of a force from Patrick to knock him down. It'll be third down and 23, and the crowd is very much in it. Snap it short, trying to wedge out for a little bit here. And I say they snapped it short. I don't know. The, the PA announcer, I'm sure you can hear it, the whole world can, <laughs> uh, called a fumble. But it uh, doesn't matter. They retained possession and they will. Uh, Still not a very good place to punt the football, Bucky. Normally, you like your punter back 14 yards from where the ball is placed. Here, he's only going to be back about 10. So Wimberley will uh, stand. I mean, he cannot move back at all now. He's got a, a three, four inches. That's all. But he gets it out of there. That's a low line drive for Kevin Williams back to the 43. It back to the 30th, so it's a 42 yard punt and a 13 yard return. And Miami is again down knocking on the door. Westerfield and Larry Millspaw of Hitachi presented uh, Miami's Hitachi Promise of Tomorrow $5,000 scholarship check to the director of athletics, Dave Maggard. Five grand for the kitty. Here's a look at Kevin Williams and how he injured himself. 
said at left ankle right there. That's uh, Johnson, the tight end that fell on his ankle. He limped off the field. Toretta rolls it out, buys a little time, has Coleman Bell wide open, touchdown. Something new. Everybody scouts until they develop tendencies, and then you put in a little new wrinkle like the rollout, and something happens. So here you go. It's going to be a fake reverse with a man coming back this way. But here's the man that's going to get the ball. The tight end's going to come across. The safety will think it's a reverse and go in the opposite direction. Tight end number 17. Look at the safety come out of the middle of the field. Toretta takes his time, knows he's got a lot of time, waits for Bell to get open. Touchdown. Threw it for the point. It's good. Seven minutes and 36 seconds to play in the first half. And the mine, the Hurricanes go to the lead by three, 10 to seven. Toretta now is 10 of 17. One of these engines was filled with Castrol Syntec, a new synthetic oil. The rest with conventional oils. They were then drained and started without oil to prove a point. You see Syntec's unique molecular structure bonds to engine parts. That, as show, it leaves a layer of protection far stronger than conventional oil. And if Syntec protects this well now, imagine if you leave it in. Castrol Syntec protects in ways other oils can't. The presidential candidate on the left stood for military action in the Persian Gulf, while the candidate on the right agreed with those who opposed it. He says he wouldn't rule out term limits, while he says he's personally opposed to term limits. This candidate was called up for military service, while this one claims he wasn't. One of these candidates is Bill Clinton. Unfortunately, so is the other. There is a simple explanation for why this happened. It's the lifeblood of your engine. That makes your oil filter your engine's most vital organ. That's why Fran keeps going the extra mile to make the best protection even better. The Fram Extra Guard Oil Filter. Unique glass fiber paper stops more dirt than any other filter for the best protection ever. Fram Extra Guard, American or import, it's an extra lease on life. Two yard punt and a 13 yard return by Kevin Williams put him on the 29 and Toretta cashed it in to Coleman Bell. And Miami leads Florida State 10 to 7 with 7.36 to go in the first half of play. Miami coming into the ball game, a rank number two in the nation, Florida State number three. Van over and McMillan waiting for Pruitt's kick. It's the 14-yard line. It's a poor play there by Hanover. Here's John Saunders. All right, Keith, let's update this game in the ACC. Terry Jordan with a nice touch on the flag pattern. Robert Hitton pulls it in. 11 yards for the touchdown. Meanwhile, in the Big East, Boston College has pulled it within 14 to 10. They trail West Virginia. Back to you, Keith. All right, John, the last three Florida State field position starting points were 14 to 15 and now again the 14. So where they had the edge in field position in the first quarter, they have not had it in the second quarter. It is Tiger McMillan, the one back offense, and Ward gives it to him. And he goes searching for a crack in the door over there, and there isn't one. Instead is a big fellow named Armstead from Texas. It says, whoa. Bobby Baker is now in at center, 6'5", 255, fifth-year senior out of Fort Myers. Clay Shiver started, but Baker's in there now. Baker is the starter from the past couple of years, had his knee scope three weeks ago, and they're trying to work him back into the game. Lonnie Johnson, the tight end, has not seen the ball today. Ward again gives the ball to McMillan. 
And he's hunted down by Michael Burrow just about the line of scrimmage. To take a look at the Hurricanes, how they rank in the nation. I mentioned in the opening, they are first in scoring defense. They're fifth against the rush and fifth in total defense. They came in averaging only 87 yards. Giving up only 87 yards, as you see Farrell fighting off the block of Farrell and making the play. Kevin Patrick deemed on the last play by a blocker has come off the field. Charlie Ward rolls that way, gets a little time. Oh, he's caught from behind by Damon Bethel. Bethel number 46 is the man who had gone into the ball game for Kevin Patrick, and he brought a pair of fresh legs into the game, and he ran him down. We talk about the team speed that both of these teams have. As you mentioned, Farrell is in for Patrick, who's in for Medeiros. He is the fourth team tied in. He's the number four tied in is Bethel, and he chases down Charlie Ward. And so the Seminoles have to put Here comes Miami. It's almost a frenzy-like performance for the Canes right now. What was that? I'm not sure. What, what did he do? <laughs> whipped it. The ball didn't even come off his foot. I don't know if he whipped it or what. 16 yards on the alleged kick. Did he whip it? He looks like he stumbled. He slipped. I've never seen anything like he that slipped. in my life. It looks like his left leg buckles. It did. It didn't slip. That foot stayed right where it was. Didn't it? The leg buckled on him, and he just didn't get anything on it. I don't know whether it was nerves. Sometimes the wind, if the wind is strong enough, it can blow the ball. But it wasn't the wind. It was his left leg. And so here's Miami with a big, big opportunity to run up. Oh, my goodness. Bad pass. Gino. He's trying to dump it off underneath to Donnell Bennett. And it was a bad throw. Good protection by the offensive line for Toretta. That's his 18th throw of the day. And he's only been hurried twice and only been touched one time. Bobby Bowden's still not sure of what Miami doesn't have the devil in the box. Every time he plays it, something happens. And that's a very unusual thing with his putter, John Wimberley, a moment ago. Second down and 10. Toretta's pass incomplete. Almost picked off. Sawyer almost had his fifth interception of the year right there. The Prudential Halftime Report, John Saunders with scores and highlights. We'll have uh, Marianne Grappavore reporting out of Homestead, Florida with linebacker Michael Burrow of Miami about the aftermath of Hurricane Andrew. And Julia Moran's out in Seattle with a report on Don James and the Washington Huskies and their success of recent years. quarterback exchange hurricanes keep the ball keep you know this is the most fundamental thing in football snapping the ball from the center to the quarterback but when the center snaps it wants to block too quick or the quarterback wants to get out that's when your problems develop that was a very ugly series for Real Miami great field position and uh, nothing out of it Schneider in the punt third punt of the game about to pooch it kill it deep got a chance at it Yes, he does. Inside the five, down at the three. 30-yard punt, but it pins Florida State back on the three-yard line at 4.29 to go in the first half, and uh, the Canes leading the Seminoles 10 to 7. Interesting call by Erickson on the Florida State 32-yard line. Punts on the 32-yard line, exactly what he wanted right now. Pin them back so the defense can come in and then the next time we get the ball, we can do something good. So it tells you a little bit about the philosophy of these two teams. I think they know it's going to be a low-scoring game. Well, the Canes had a low scorer last week against Arizona. Just barely escaped. 
Sean Jackson is in the backfield in the end zone. Ward to turn and throw the other way and completes it to Fryer. Matt Fryer sees the ball for the first time today, and he's going to have it out for a first down. And that took some nerve to call that particular play in that particular field position. Here's a look at what they've done. As you mentioned, Keith, they've punted the last four times. Before that, they had uh, missed a field goal or had a field goal block, and then they had the interception. Charlie Ward is two of seven for about 20 yards. First down from the 14. Patrick's after Ward. Uh, the other defensive end gets him going that way and finally pulls him down. They're going to throw a flag on it. But I don't know that that's really truly warranted because number 91, Darren Klein, looked to me like he was just falling down. But you get a flag on it, and it'll be a penalty against Miami. Foul. Personal foul on the defense. Let's take a look at this play action fake. He's going to get pressured from Patrick on the left side, but that's no problem. Charlie can run away from in. Cry 91, the other end. Let's watch this. I don't know. Looked like he was out of bounds. He, oh, he know. was out of bounds. No question about it. I mean, his momentum was going to carry him out of bounds. I think yep. he made a little bit of extracurricular. So the penalty moves the ball up to the 30. It's a big, uh, big penalty there. Big break for FSU. Started back on the three, they're now on the 30, go to fire the other way. And Fire makes the catch at the 35. And that'll pick up a couple of more before Ryan McNeil can bring it down. Keith, that uh, that foul, that flag was a was it was a major foul, 15-yard penalty. And and the amount of times that you have one of those in a drive and the team will then go on, offensive team will go on and score a touchdown is unbelievable. Very high percent. Oh, yeah, it, it, because the offense feels like, oh, you're helping us. You gave us 15 yards. Now let's do something for ourselves. And if you're helping us, we'll help ourselves. Second down, long two. Ward throws and uh, nothing there because the intended receiver, number one, Shannon Baker, turned inside, Ward threw outside. And it's incomplete. Ward is not setting it on fire. That's true. But the potential is scary. Well, at any second he could do it. His, his season has been inconsistency. He's been outstanding or he's been bad. He's been a nightmare or a dream, depending on which game he's played in. He barely got away with that ball, and the referee very quickly drops the flag. You probably got a procedure call coming here. The referee is uh, Joe Ryder. Dead ball foul, illegal snap on the offense. So they'll uh, take five away from Florida State. Clark Gaston is the umpire, Sam Stevenson the line judge, Mike Looney the field judge, Dan Post the side judge, Ernie Benson the Good line snap. judge, the and the uh, back judge is virtual Val ACC. On Miami. They'll put the ball back just outside the 32-yard line for Florida State now. And it's third down and seven for the ball. Ward has time. He's got a man over there, McCarvey, and he put it right between the eights. And it's a big first down for Florida State. Beautiful pass there. Nice throw by Charlie Ward, too. And he's going to get it to us here. He's going to come down and break to the outside. The inside receiver is going to be short. The defensive back at the top of your screen should have been back there. Miami 43-yard line. First down. Ward's pass to Fryer again. He's got three in a row this possession and he puts the ball inside the 30 at the 29 and that's another first down so Miami had momentum for a goodly part of this quarter going to the right 
Now it's turned around and going the other way with yep. Florida State. And it all seemed to turn on that one foul out of bounds where uh, Crying tackled uh, Charlie Ward out of bounds and gave him the 15 yards. Just inside the 29. First down for the Seminoles. Jackson. Ward passes away to fire. That's four catches. And down at the 20 yard line for a nine yard pickup. So it's almost as if they suddenly discovered that Matt Pryor was playing today. Yep. Pryor is the possession receiver. Not a lot of speed, but he can catch the ball. And Bowden now is getting Charlie Ward outside the pocket a little bit more, giving him a little bit more time to throw. Doesn't have to read from the pocket. Just find a man that's open and athletically get the ball to him. In this possession, he's five out of six. And four of the five have gone to Pryor. He's looking for Baker. Baker's not available. Miami doubled up on Shannon Baker. And then the pursuit caught up. And they took Ward down. Fryer went down to the 10-yard line, and then suddenly he drew a crowd. Charlie Ward outside the pocket again. Take a look at Baker, number one. Not open there. I wonder about the receiver and the defensive back, whether that's pass interference. As long as in college, as long as the defensive back is in front of the offensive man, he can jam it. Matt Fryer hurt on the play, trying to throw a block. So the timeout on the field is in his behalf. Top of your screen right there. Fryer is looking back. That's where he got injured. The football rests at the 21-yard line. It'll be third down and three for Florida State. Matt from Live Oak, Florida, 5'11", 190 junior, leaving the field. Looks all right. As a quarterback, you hate to see the your hot receiver going out of the ball game. Score is 10-7, Miami. Florida State now at the first threatening posture in some time. Their touchdown came on a 94-yard kickoff return, the opening kickoff by Tamaric Venable. Curly Ward. No. Pass intended for uh, Tamaric Vanover. And he missed it. So in will come the kicking unit, and we'll get a field goal drop. All right, let's go back and take a look at the offensive line play. Both coaches alluded to the fact that it would be key. Right there, that's Mark Caesar. Gets in around McNeil, puts pressure on him, and forces him to throw it a little early. 39-yard try earlier today by Mallory was blocked by Miami. This is a big to tie the score. 38 yards. Hooked it. Left. Missed it. Don't get down on yourself. They may need you later. That's the word to be exchanged right there. State is turned away with nothing. Snap is good. Just pulls it. Larry Jones checks into the Miami backfield now. Coretta gives it to it. And number 90 puts a hat on him. Derek Alexander. Redshirt freshman from Jacksonville. Knocks him down and he got him short of the line of scrimmage. With a minute and a half to go in the first half, Miami has all three timeouts. Second down, 11 from the 20. Loretta throws underneath. That is indeed a greeting for Larry Jones. Larry says, uh, Marvin says hello to Larry. Yes, uh, that three <laughs> named Marvin just fell on me. <laughs> 
And they are not related. <laughs> the Jones boys. Yeah. And boy, did they have a little collision. Uh, Marvin Jones is a linebacker, all American, as we mentioned. And he just creamed him. Oh, it's third down, 11. is incomplete intended for Coleman Bell down the middle it was good coverage on him number 31 down defending Levon Brown for Florida State and Miami's got to kick it away so the defenses are becoming on the presence in the ball game no surprise there Toretta one out of his last six Snyder to punt Sawyer to return it Good kick into the wind. Watch the return over here. It's set up. Sawyer can get over here. Good block by 21. 15. Snyder, the punter, finally brings him down. 49 yard punt, but it is a 50 yard return. Chris Hall, number 21 now, is the man that's going to throw a huge block in this return. Watch the white jerseys now. After they see them all peeling off to the right side, look at all the jerseys peeling off to the right side. Now the red jerseys are in the middle of the field. Sawyer's job is to catch it and get over there to our right side. There's a clip right there. And now he's got all these white jerseys. Is that a clip? Yeah, that, that looked like a clip. Unless, unless the official said that at the last minute, the Miami guy turned his back. Could have been the call. All right, it's the 19-yard line of Miami. First down, Florida State. Ball rolls back to Charlie Ward. His pass is underneath the flyer who's back in, and that is pushed out of bounds at about the 13. Florida State has two timeouts remaining. Time remaining, 49 seconds. This fire goes out of bounds to kill the clock. Offensively inside the 20, Florida State, 20 times, 11 touchdowns, and four field goals. Miami, the opponents haven't been down there very often. Looks like Miami might have spent the time out. Michael Barrows is talking with one of the Florida State big people there, exchanging words. So you've got a timeout with 49 seconds to go in the first half. I'm Frank Gifford, and this Monday night, the unbeaten Dallas Cowboys take on the unbeaten Philadelphia Eagles. Eagles quarterback Randall Cunningham has made a spectacular comeback from a serious knee injury, and he's the top-rated quarterback in the NFL. His young counterpart for the Cowboys, Troy Aikman, is also off to a superb start. He'll challenge the Eagles' number one ranked defense Monday night on ABC. Six brutal murders. A TV reporter out to catch a killer before she's the next victim. Suzanne Summers, exclusive Sunday. 49 seconds left to play. And the ball is in uh, very tender territory for the Miami Hurricane. And it's been the Florida State special team that has done the real big damage. Without question, uh, kickoff return for a touchdown to start the game, and now here a punt return. Florida State came into the ball game with outstanding special teams. Their, their punt return was second in the ACC. And their kickoff return was first in the Atlantic Coast Conference. So Bowden and his troops have very good uh, return people. Their kickers, uh, Maori, uh, missed a field goal, so not real strong in that area. FSU has 161 return yards on the day. That's front and kickoff. Miami only 14. So with two timeouts remaining now for uh, Florida State. It was Miami that called that last just inside the 13-yard line. Clay Shiver is back in at center. And they go to the shotgun. Ward looking around. Takes off. He gets to the five. And that will be first and goal Florida State at the Miami five. And you've got 41 seconds left to play in the first half. Here's Jack. Well, Keith, you talk about Charlie Ward being such a terrific point guard. In fact, Dean Smith says he's the best point guard he's ever seen. You know, Smith from North Carolina, Mr. Basketball. But he's used to pressure. You talked about the ACC where they went to the, the final 16. Well, how about the Metro Conference back in 1990? They were competing for the championship game. 
the seconds were winding down. Who steps to the line 28 feet away and sinks a three-pointer to win the game? Charlie Ward. Yeah, but in that game, there isn't some great big old hulking guy waiting to hit you upside <laughs> the head. <laughs> Somebody named Barrow or Smith or yeah. Ryan or Patrick or whatever. He's a good student too, Keith. He's got a 3.0 grade point average and he is a vice president of the student body. And a lot of Georgia folks mumble about that because Charlie comes out of Thomasville, but then Thomasville is a favorite hangout of the Florida State Seminoles. Yes, so that's where they go to spend their nights that's right. before their home game. So uh, if there is an, uh, a connection uh, and affection, if you will, between uh, Thomasville, Georgia, and the Florida Seminoles, it's for that reason. Pretty good high school. <laughs> well, there are a lot of them on this roster. Yep. Florida State team. All right, they're trying to get in and either take the lead or at least tie. It's 10 7 Miami with 41 seconds to play in the first half. Fire and McCorvey are going to the top of the picture. Vanover comes to the bottom. Ward looks to the top, goes to the corner, has a man, incomplete. That is a very good play by Ryan McNeil. Number 47, the pass intended for Kez McCorby. Well, you can't throw Ryan it any better McNeil. than Charlie Ward threw it. From the other side of the field, reverse angle, the two men Second closest down. to us are the only oh. ones involved. McCorby lined up way inside, gave him a lot of room to drift to. That ball is right on target, and McNeil is there to make a play. Does McNeil even touch this ball? I don't know. His left hand may have got up in there just at the last minute. It's second down and five, or second and goal from the five. Ward rolls out, and the pass to the end zone is incomplete. And the man doing the harassing on the play was number two for the Miami Hurricanes, and he's a rush specialist, Rohan Marley. Rowan Marley. He's only 5'8". He weighs 202 pounds. And he's, uh, Tommy Tuberville says he's the best open field tackler on the team. And he's in there for one reason, and that is to stay close to him because he has speed. Good coverage in the secondary. There wasn't anybody open for very long. So it is third and goal from the five. Just miss him. He gets his pass in the end zone, and it is too high. And bended for Vanover, but Klein and Patrick were both coming. And they force him to throw it on the move, and he can't put it on the numbers. Could have had that one. Charlie Ward could have had that one. Yeah, he was open. Man's wide open. Well, he has to beat the pressure. He has to do something next to Charlie Ward right there. Has to beat what the offensive line didn't take care of. Now, this man is open in the back of the end zone. Ward was going to the right. He had to throw it back a little bit, but that was a completable pass. 23-yard field goal try by Dan Maui to tie at 23 seconds to go in the first half. And this one is good. And this is something good. So he missed the last time he was down there. But this time he puts the ball right through the uprights and at 19 seconds to play in the first half, we're all even at 10. And it's a typical Seminole Hurricane fist. Seven, 42 seconds to play in the ball game. Florida State goes for two points. Doesn't work. Miami wins by one. Been that kind of a series. So I'm not so sure. Bob, in this case, normally you would say, hey, Florida State's going to the clubhouse with momentum. I'm not so sure that they gain much momentum out of that particular possession when 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 you have a team when an offensive team is inside the 10 and the defensive team comes out with just a field goal they can count that as a as a positive 
And as far as offensively, you get inside there, you want seven points. And if you only settle for three, there, there, nobody gains in that situation. Jonathan Harris and Daryl Spencer are the deep people for the deep Miami the Hurricanes. Hurricanes. Harris the only thing that Florida State gained from that offensive series is they finally put some points on the board. The other seven was from special teams. Right. The offense can say, hey, we did get three. Get something. Right. Yep. That's a pooch pop-up. Fair catch is called, and the fair catch is made by Dietrich Clausel, number 83, who became a personality of note last week. And he caught the only touchdown pass of the ball game to beat Arizona 8-7. to seven. He didn't kick that ball downfield very far. That was about 15 yards, but good coaching by Miami. Special teams for the tell that young man alert everybody up there if you get a high pooch punt like a kickoff like that you can fair catch it and, and they don't use any time yeah and not let the other team come down but that's and they've, they've got two timeouts remaining so you got 19 seconds you got two timeouts minute behind the Toretta the ball is at the 42 Toretta wants to go and uh, the man for whom the pass is intended Horace Bookman broke off the route and looked like they didn't really communicate very well on it. And that's uh, six seconds uh, gone there. Spencer's coming out, number 35. Jonathan Harris has gone in. Kevin Williams has not been back in since he sprained that ankle earlier in the ballgame. killer and so we're going to end this first half of play with a score Florida State 10 Miami 10. tie as the teams come on the field and uh, the Florida State Seminoles jump to the lead off the opening kickoff on a 94 yard run return of their kickoff by Vanover and Miami got a field goal and uh, to make it a seven nothing obviously off the opening kickoff and threw it a 24 yard field goal to make it seven three in the third quarter Coleman Bell down the middle on a little rollout action or the Florida State safety got lost and Made it a 10-7 Miami lead. And then finally, Maori tied it up late in the first half with a 22-yard field goal, having missed one previously from in close. And that's where we are. Jonathan Harris and Daryl Spencer are the deep people as Miami will get the ball first here in the second half, and Maori will kick it off. They're playing on grass at the Orange Bowl. And it's been a knockdown drag out. Saturday afternoon scrap between these two old foes, and this is Jonathan Harris. Got some room. Good return outside the 40-yard line by Jonathan Harris. Kevin Williams suffered a sprained ankle in the first half of play and may be done for the day. The kickoff return is 42 yards. Take a look, halftime statistics. Look at the return yards, first of all, for Florida State, 168 yards. The only score that uh, FSU had was a special teams kickoff return of 94 yards. Miami comes up with a one back, Stephen McGuire, in there, and Toretta gives it to him, and he finds some daylight over the left side and gets about five yards on the carry. Jones. Take a look, Miami, in the first half. Besides the 12, look at the 12 plays. That was the only drive that they had over four plays. They had the ball three times in FSU possession and didn't score but uh, the one touchdown on the one in the play. Toretta's passing stats. Bennett is the leading rusher with 13 yards, and Thomas has caught three for 29. Jones leads the tacklers for Florida State. And the ball is at the 47 of Miami, second down and five. 
the reverse. Beretta throws, pass good to Larry Jones. And the big back carries it down inside the 30 to the 25. You got a penalty flag back up the field, and you got a penalty flag thrown down here where he went out of bounds. Illegal block in the back on the offense. Well, he's ignoring the other flag that was thrown down here when uh, he was tackled out of bounds. Well, that has to be considered too, doesn't it? Yes, he does. I think he's just finding out about it. Just starting the second half of play. I think the other one's going to be a face mask. No, no. On the tackle. The illegal block on the back. On the offense, personal foul on the defense, offsetting, replay the down, second down. So the ball will come back to the 47-yard line, and Dennis Erickson looks at it and says, shoot. Bobby Bowden on the other side looks at it and says, shoot. Well, it, it, it took a, a good play away from the hurricane, so it really actually benefits FSU, even though offsetting penalties. Ken Alexander leaves the defensive alignment for uh, Florida State. Stephen McGuire checks back in for Miami. Horst Copeland's almost lined up offside for Miami. They run it. And on second and five, that's a gain of a yard. It'll be third down and four. Take a look at the offensive line for the Hurricanes. We said it'd be critical. A little draw play. The hole is there for a second, but it closes up very quickly. Well, we thought that uh, Messrs. Uh, Freeman and uh, Footman would be uh, huge factors in this ball game for Florida State, but really they haven't been, have they? No sacks. Third down and pretty close to five. Beretta pops it up, and there's nobody there. The closest man was uh, number eight, Corey Sawyer, as the intended receiver for Miami broke off the pattern underneath, and it was not an orange shirt in the neighborhood. And so it's a bit of a wobbly start for the Canes offense. Beretta's now hope for his last six, and they'll have to punt it away. Florida State special team, very prominent so far in this ballgame. See what Corey Sawyer can do with this one. Good kick last night. And he slipped a little bit. Oh. Miami dives for the ball. And the man in the striped shirt down there says Florida State has it. They will be backed up a 47 yard punt. There's the ball loose. Tommy Henry covered it. A 14 mile an hour wind waffling the fronds of the palms as we go into 13 minutes to go in the third quarter. And Florida State's first possession of the half. The ball is marked just, just beyond the nine yard line. Officially, they say 10, but actually the nose of the ball appears to be touching the nine hash mark. And the nose come up with Sean Jackson lined up behind Charlie Ward. Ward almost fell down coming off the snap. Now he gets some heat and takes a lick behind the line of scrimmage, and that's four times he has been decked. He fumbled the ball, and mine has got it. Darren Klein comes out of there with it. So the big guy from Aurora, Colorado, who's played a tough game all day, comes out with Ward's fumble, and it's a glorious opportunity for Miami. Well, the receivers are covered to the left side. The key coming in, we said, was the offensive line play. Ward stumbles, and then I think it's Patrick coming from the left side initially that's going to chase him out and knock the ball loose. Kevin Patrick playing for Madaris, and the other defensive end, Krein, recovers the ball. Those two big guys have been terrific all day. Patrick and Brian. McGuire opens in the backfield behind Toretta. Whistles, and uh, as Toretta stood up, 
to uh, change his play. Florida State wired, all anxious, that moved ball too foul. soon. Offside on the defense. That'll cost him half the distance. So from the five, that ball's going to go in down uh, two and a half yards. 10 10 tie, and Miami trying to untie it right here. Simpson defensive end for Florida State. I mean, he was in that backfield before you could take a breath. Loss is back to the five. That takes care of the penalty. Left side, right between the guard and the tackle. We're talking about the offensive line play. There was no communication between the guard and the tackle. 78 was Vickers. The tackle had to come down and block Simpson. There was no communication, and it didn't get done. So it's second down and goal from the five. They'll throw it. Pass is incomplete, intended for Donnell Bennett. And uh, Clifton Abraham, number two there, was the defender for Florida State. And so it is third down. Very tentative throw here by Toretta. Maybe it's because he's throwing to Bennett. Bennett is normally a running back is not used out on that flanker position very often. And it was a poor throw, a little bit low and a tough catch for Bennett. Kevin Williams shows up. Sprained ankle and all on third down and goal from the five. He's the wide out top of the pick. Comes the other way with the pass that is low and incomplete. You got Copeland Scorpion for interference over here and gets no call on the play. He and Lamar Thomas are both going at the official. Now, do you go for the place kick or do you try to put it in the end zone? No uh, you can't get it in the first three. You don't go for four. You got to get three points. That's a big uh, disappointment for the Hurricanes and a big boost after that fumble for FSU. Well, it was really, again, a very poor series for Miami. Just ragged. Toretta, all of eight. Now, going back into the first half, just his last eight throws. Timeout called by Miami. So they're still screwed up and they have to burn a timeout. All right, now they've got uh, the full complement of people on the field for Pruitt's 22 yard field goal try and the effort to untie it. Well, they had 10 men a while ago. Why they burned the timeout. That's good. Always good. Gets up. He missed it. He just almost smelled it coming, didn't he? That whole series was just absolutely a mess. Well, last week, the Hurricanes barely beat Arizona right here on this field, and Pruitt missed two very makeable field goals. He's replacing Carlos Huerta, who was an outstanding place kicker for four years for the Hurricanes. That's a big, big uh, giveaway right there for the Hurricanes. Snap is good. Hold is good. He just misses it. Last year was the Seminole who had field goal problems in this this year, it's the Hurricanes, but, you know, the kickers play such an important role, Keith, in a close game down to the wire. Neither one of these guys has any confidence right now. Ball comes out for the 20, first down Florida State. Ward throws, throws wildly into the bench, and it is incomplete intended for Matt Fryer. Singler. Take a look at the Florida State possessions in the first half. They started out with an interception. Actually, their first kick, their first uh, chance was a kickoff return for a touchdown, and the last one was a field goal. Pressure on Ward, flushes him back into the stack, and down he goes. That's five times that he's been taken down behind the line of scrimmage. And that number 46 is involved again. Damon Bethel's in there helping flush. And uh, the shotgun business, the ball's not coming back all that well sometimes uh, in, uh, when they're in the shotgun. Low. 
but it was pressure from that looping defensive end uh, that caused that play. Ryan and Hunt played well. resulted in 16 yards the last time we saw him kick it, but this time he airmailed it. Kevin Williams looking for a little daylight on the sideline was taken down at the 48-yard line of Florida State. And we get a bit of a ruckus on the sideline. That's a 52-yard punt and a nine-yard return, but they extricate the player from the Miami sideline without further abuse. And here's Jack. Keep that missed field goal is almost a self-fulfilling prophecy for Coach Dennis Erickson. At halftime, that was the only complaint he had to his team. The fact that the kicking game was atrocious. He said, if we don't bring it up a notch, we're going to lose. On the other hand, in the Florida State Seminoles locker room, what Bobby Bowden talked about was one thing real simple. What Kirk Carruthers said last year. FSU thinks sometimes they'll win the game. Miami knows they'll win the game. On first down from the 48, Toretta throws to Lamar Thomas. He's got a couple of blocks up there, but the very good recovery by Marvin Jones. The gain on the play is no more than five yards because of Jones. Marvin Jones. An outstanding play by the All-American. Uh, Thomas looks like he's, uh, I don't know whether he has a cramp or what, but he's still down. Hot, humid day, a timeout for Lamar Thomas. We go to John. Keith, as you know, former Clemson coach Danny Ford is helping out his buddy Joe Kynes as an offensive consultant. Well, they needed him on defense, though. Garrison to Hurst, 12 yards, and Arkansas just can't tackle. He gets to the end zone. Georgia leads it 10 to 3. Keith. You know, that Garrison Hurst must be a pretty good running back, huh? We've seen him do that a lot lately. Uh huh. Here's the play in which uh, Thomas is hurt. Like a hit and run on the knee. Kicked, yeah, right there at the beginning. Now, he's walking off, though. Looks like he'll be all right. Ten minutes and two seconds to go in the third quarter. A 10-10 tie. Miami was down there first and goal at the five, and they get nothing out of it. And now they're knocking on the door again as they possess the ball at the 44-yard line. We're at second down and six. It is the fifth Miami possession to start in Florida State Territory. Normally you'd think Miami would have uh, three or four touchdowns. Boy scored on two of the previous four times they've been in. Loretta's pass down the middle is uh, off the chest of a limping Kevin Williams. Hit him right on the numbers and he just did not reel it in. And it was good coverage. He had good pass protection that time. But Bush, number 11, just knocked the ball away. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't see the the will for the moment that is always marked with the Miami team. They're distracted almost, aren't they? Disruptive defenses, Keith, can do that. There's a lot of pressure on the quarterbacks and a lot of tight coverage in the secondary. A lot of that coverage is man. Here comes the pressure. Toretta gets it away. Thomas has got a chance at it. And it is incomplete. Defending on the play is Tommy Henry for Florida State. John Davis, the strong safety who has blitzed a half a dozen times, was coming like a house of fire again. And he put a lick on uh, Gino Toretta. They had six men coming. That means five are left to cover in the secondary. And that's Henry right there. He didn't see the ball as soon as Thomas did. But I think that's a good no call. Miami is now one out of ten on third down conversion. That uh, snap comes bouncing back to the punter. 
But he gets it out of there and gets a good bounce, and it's gone. Oh, did he knock it into the end zone, or is it dead? He knocked it into the end zone. He knocked it in. Miami clear. Well, the, 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 the momentum of the ball was going to take it in. They were trying to knock it back out. They just did not keep it out. That was close. So Florida State gets a break and gets the ball out for the 20. See, you're right. Yeah, he, as long, the ball, once the ball breaks the plane of the goal line, it's a touchback. Yeah. They left it alone. It might come out here. It may have come back. You're right. Whatever. 20-yard line, first down for Florida State. It's a big difference for that offensive team, I'll tell you. Oh, yes. Ward bootlegs and throws it. Has a man fired. It's intercepted. Picked off by Paul White. Paul White has blocked a field goal try and intercepted a pass. So he's having a pretty good day. Ball is just going to be underthrown a little bit, but White makes a good play out of it. Charlie Ward, play action, outside the pocket, all time, all kinds of time now. Why throw on the run? Why not set your stick? Because Pryor was behind the man. He throws on the run instead of stopping and making sure you get all of your uh, your weight and your direction going in the right place. So one play, and the Florida State defense is back on the field. You're going to wear them out if you keep up this pace. Give the ball to the running back, McGuire. And from the 49, picks up three. Six times now, Miami has possessed the ball to start a series in Florida State territory, and they have scored once. Seven as Bennett comes into the backfield. Reverse number 95 for all Simpson right there takes the runner down. They had problems with Simpson all day long. Not only Footman and Freeman, but Simpson has been right there. He sacked the Toretta three times in last year's game. Take a look at the offensive line, the right side of it. Right there, Barber 60 pulls and nobody covers for him. The center is late getting there. And Simpson is just too quick off the ball. That's just poor communication in the offensive line. That's one of the problems uh, for the Hurricanes the past couple of games. Ball comes back to the Miami 46 now after Simpson's play. And it's third down and 15. Lamar Thomas can't get to it. So they are 1 for 11 in third down conversions. And they'll put. Well, both teams came in uh, defensively very tough on third down conversions, Keith, and they're living up to it here today. Beretta is one of his last 12 passes. Schneider to punt. Sawyer to return. Seventh punt of the day. Good one. High hanger. And Sawyer down on the knee to make the catch. Back at the 17-yard line. And therefore, the state will go to work in a 10-10 time. Here's John. Keith, Boston College in West Virginia and B.C. fighting their way back. That great running back tandem and Dwight Shirley, one of them, seven yards, high stepping for the touchdown. They lead by seven. Keith. Well, B.C.'s got Penn State down the road. They're kind of lucky in a way, I guess, if you can call anything lucky. They're off next week. Penn State plays Miami in Happy Valley, and then B.C. comes to town. DC's ever won it, have they? I don't think they ever been. Yeah. There's nothing there. Maybe a couple of yards for Tiger McMillan. He's a 180-pounder. And the clock running at 725. Next Saturday, you got Miami up in the middle of the state of Pennsylvania against the unbeaten Nittany Lions. And uh, you remember they had a pretty good scuffle down here in the Orange Bowl, a game we did last year. Bob and I will be up there with you along with our folks at noon Eastern time. Now, 9-8 in the West 
Franklin. Second down and eight. Macmillan again gets two more. Defenses are just dominating. There's a look at Krein, the defensive end. Miami's had the ball four times in the second half, three plays and out each time. And one of those plays they got on the Florida State five-yard line missed a field goal. I'll tell you what, right now, if something terribly dramatic doesn't happen, I'm going to vote for Krein and Pepper. <laughs> Both. We'll call it Krein and Pepper. Third down and four. Ward sets up, gets heat, throws good. Pass is caught by Jim Patterson. No, William Floyd, the fullback. William Floyd, number 44, is a fullback by trade, but because of injuries and the paucity of personnel at tight ends, William Floyd goes up and plays that position. Well, he came into the ball game with no receptions on the year. Remember, we showed you a graphic earlier. 85% of the tosses this year had gone to wide receivers. Floyd. Makes his first catch today. Your crowd is 77,338, sixth largest ever for Miami. Ward bootlegged it, kept it, looking for Fryer, goes underneath to the short man, pass caught by Kevin Knox. That is the first time Knox has seen the ball today, and he picked up about six yards. Keith, Florida State linebacker Derek Brooks is in the locker room right here. He's suffering from dehydration. They've added IVs. I'll tell you more about it in a minute because it's very, very interesting. On second down and three, Ward throws to the sideline. Pass complete to 33. McMillan, he's got a first down and pins on all the way down to the Miami 40. Go ahead, Jack. Well, Keith, what the problem is happening only on the Florida State sidelines is all of the players are coming off suffering severe cramping effects. It's what the coaches were concerned about. That's why they brought all the cooling material. They are very concerned that their team may wilt, literally fall in the humidity here. Remember, it's not as humid in Tallahassee as it is, Bob Creasy, as you know, down here in Miami. Yeah, well, don't, the defense ain't hearing you, Jack, because the defense is playing a heck of a game. I always thought it was pretty humid in Tallahassee. 41-yard line. Ward sets, looks, throws down the middle. He's finding his people now. He's hit Knox two in a row. Down at the 25-yard line. I don't know about the football players, Wilson, but I know I am. Play is good for 16 yards. Take a look at the pass protection, the offensive line. Charlie Ward, double team there on Caesar, 99. Finds a spot, zone coverage, just get between the linebackers. This is what Ward will do for you. He all of a sudden, everything will quit. Before you know it, he's got your hook. John Jackson's in, Ward goes again, throws it very hard, and Knox had no chance to catch that ball. None. It's he's good. lucky he didn't break three fingers. Good point, Keith. The blitz, Charlie Ward fired and saw it coming. Second and ten. At the conclusion of today's game, Chevrolet, most valuable player from each team, I'm going to vote two for Miami. For the 22nd year through the Chevy Scholarship Program, $1,000 donated to the General Scholarship Fund of each school. 22 years for Chevrolet's participation. Second down and 10. A lot of time for Charlie Ward. I mean a bunch of time. There's a penalty flag thrown, though. John Jackson made that catch coming out of the backfield, so they kind of switch signals here, start throwing to the backs a little bit. On the tackle. The game was five yards. On the offense. Five yards, back him up. Time remaining, third quarter, 436. You saw the Boston College West Virginia score, and of course that has some meaning for Miami because Boston College and West Virginia is down the road for them. Toretta has kind of cooled it. Charlie Ward has come on. What you don't see are the six sacks 
that the Hurricanes have got on Charlie Warren here today. I mean, the offenses on both sides need to be opening the door for the defenses the rest of the season. That's for sure after this game. Now, Phillips the running back. Ward gave it to him. And he runs into number 45, Darren Smith. Down by Darren Smith. The game was two. And he puts the ball down at the 28 yard line. Third down at 13. To make it third down and 13 for Florida State. I mean, very good on third down situations here, too. Good teams, good defenses, tough on third down. Man front. They don't look blitz. But they pop through the middle, pass the ball to Hanover, and he gets loose for a moment. But he is well short of the first down as they take him down at the 20. And it'll be fourth down, and here comes Dan Mowry. That Vanover's got a uh, chance to be a pretty exci exciting player, doesn't he? He does, and it's almost which kicker is going to come out of his slump and make the first field goal here. Mowry trying to untie it for the Seminole. Got it away. And made it. Number four, White. Almost blocked that kick for Miami. Looked like Paul White had the ball go right between his arms. Here are the numbers on your scoring drive. And Maury's 38-yarder puts the Florida State Seminoles to the lead by three. And Kevin Williams now shows up on the return team. He and Jonathan uh, Darrell Spencer are back there waiting for the kick. Kevin Williams uh, got a little bit of a sprained ankle. He's probably not at 100%. Looks like they're going to pooch it again, pop it up, keep it away from him. Not let those uh, deep people, those speed burners, have a shot at it. That's what they do. Very high and dropping back is number 83, the fair catch at the same man that did it before, Dietrich Clausel. And Miami will take over the ball, first down at the 24 yard line. The American Red Cross disaster relief phone number, and this includes uh, assistance for Florida, Louisiana, and Hawaii. The number's there, 1-800-842-2200. So if you'd like to make a contribution to assist in the recovery of all of the natural disasters this year, Florida, Louisiana, and Hawaii, we encourage you to do so. Stephen McGuire. One back now for Miami on first down from the 24. Toretta lets her fly for Copeland, and it is intercepted by Corey Sawyer. That's number five. That's Sawyer's fifth interception on the year, Keith. As you mentioned, he had three against North Carolina State. Frustration right here. Miami coming out. It's a little pump, a hitch and go. Pump and let it fly. And Sawyer, number eight, who's just a sophomore, plays it all the way. The ball's thrown to the outside. Copeland had gone inside, and Sawyer held on to it long enough for the interception. And Toretta is one of his last 13. And the last seven possessions, the last seven possessions, it's been three plays and out right here. Go back to the first half. That's just the second half possessions. You go back and pick up two more in the first half. The last seven possessions, nothing. From the 35-yard line, some hard running here by Sean Jackson. Jackson. And picks up a first down. Stopped by Valley Sigler. Game is 10 yards. Effort through first down. Now here comes that familiar oh. chance. It belonged at the beginning and always to Florida State. Uh, folks up 
partisans of the Atlanta Braves made the heavy use of it a year ago. What did we hear? 8,000 8, tickets uh, for FSU this week? 11,000. 11,000 tickets. Warren hands the ball to Jackson. He's got a profit. Jesse Armstead was the first profit. Jackson. And uh, other folks, including uh, 290-pound Mark Caesar, arrived on the scene. And the ever-present uh, Kevin Patrick was in the neighborhood as well. Offensive line, straight blocking, all of them. That's uh, Caesar, 99, that gets around and forced him to come back. And now uh, Armstead, when you start running sideways against a team that has as much speed and quickness as Miami, you're in trouble. So it's second down, 13 now. Back at the 42. McMillan, the backfield. Ward looking, throws a little drop off pass to Tamaric Hanover. At the last minute, you know, we pay for this. And Vanover will have uh, about four yards. Time winding down in the third quarter now as we come up on a minute and 15 to go. It's 13 to 10, Florida State leading. And that's Bobby Bowden pacing the sideline. And across the way, doing the same thing, Dennis Erickson. The ball is at the 49, where it is third down and six. Charlie Ward back, has time, lets it fly for Fanover. He can't get it. It's incomplete, and it'll be fourth down. Well, if you like shutouts, and if you like the defensive football, you're seeing it here today. I mean... Not a lot of points on the board. A lot of defensive plays. We talked about the beginning of the game. The offense gets all the attention, all the bells and the whistles and the uh, slogans and the nicknames, but it's the defense that has the hammer here today. And there have been some sensational defensive plays. Boy, oh, boy. Really have. Wimbley to punt. Williams won't mess with it. The ball is knocked out of bounds at about the 21 yard line so that's where Miami will get it at their own 21 Miami offense has just been off through this whole second half so far Monday night the Philadelphia Eagles and the Dallas Cowboys and that is uh, that's a double six gun uh, square off at the corral you talk about uh, two undefeated teams going right at each other how about the Eagles losing Keith Jackson? Well, I think the NFL is in for some interesting days. That'll be at 9 Eastern time on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. Toretta's pass. Williams goes up and gets it. Didn't give Williams a chance to run with it. He had to come back for it. And the little man, uh, Williams, takes a whacking from the big man, Joe Marvin Jones. So the gain on the play is about seven. Put it on the 28-yard line where it is second down. Could be the last snap of the third quarter. This is Stephen McGuire for the first down. And the quarter's over. We got 15 minutes to go. And the Seminoles lead 13 to 10. And now the four fingers of Miami. That says we own the fourth quarter. We'll see after this message and the word from our ABC station. Well, Miami has the ball. They've held up their four fingers. They are trailing by three points, 13 to 10, to Old Fall Florida State. So it is now put up time. McGuire goes in motion. That gives them four wide outs. And Toretta's pass is away and incomplete. You had two receivers in the same neighborhood, Bell and Thomas. Bell got his hands on it, but couldn't hold it. Third quarter stats, uh, almost identical. Take a look at the total yards, 195 to 196 for both teams. Passing yards about the same. Rushing yards not doing as well as they're throwing. First downs in favor of FSU. Six sacks, though, for Miami against Charlie Ward. None against Toretta. It has been a day for the defense. But the big dog hunt. Toretta trying to surprise him with a little pop up the middle, but 
very little out of it. Carlson stopped it. And now here comes Hunger. Keith, what a job Barry Alvarez has done for Wisconsin. His only loss in his last six games was to number one Washington. Here, Brett Moss goes in for the touchdown. His second of the game, and right now, Wisconsin, the Badgers with the lead, 17 to 10 over Ohio State. Keith. Well, that would blow some doors off, wouldn't it? Wisconsin beat Ohio State. Uh -huh. Barry Alvarez putting it together up in Madison. Back goes to Retta. Third down, they're one of 11. Finally breaks the string. Daryl Spencer is the man that caught the ball, and that will get him off the hook. That puts him into a two for 12. Big catch by Spencer, too, Keith. Double covered, and Toretta had to go to him, needed him, and he caught the ball and a first down. This is the first drive in eight drives where they made a first down. Final quarter just starting the fourth quarter. Florida State 13 and Miami 10. Pass good. Bell. Bell's going to have about eight yards as he gets to the 44 yard line of Florida State. The Red Raiders are giving the Aggies all they want today, too, aren't they? Keen is seven yards, second down and three. Horace Copeland has come off the field. Chris Jones is in there, number 85. That's a fresh pair of legs. On second and short, let's see if they send him deep. Let's check it off. Nope. Go to McGuire. McGuire trying for the first down, and he won't get it. Big 95 is in there. And so is number 18, John Davis, the ever-present John Davis. Run down by Davis. McGuire has 11 carries and 24 yards, so the Miami running game has not been particularly productive today either. But the people that they're going up against are <laughs> pretty good crowd. It's a posse. Third and two. Here they come. Passes away, and as Williams looks back, the ball arrives, and he can't react to it. And Miami will punt. Beretta had no choice but to let it go quickly. And uh, Williams couldn't adjust to it. They're all coming. Blitz, and here we are right here. Just going to get a little man on the outside. If he can get him the ball, he might be able to run. Linebackers are blitzing. If he could have caught that ball, could have been a chance to run with it. Good defense, pressure defense, forcing offensive players to make plays. Snyder's punt. Fair catch, arm wave back at the 12-yard line by Corey Sawyer. And that's where Florida State will have it, leading by 13 to 10. State backed up on their own 12-yard line, and Miami kids out on the field trying to get the crowd more involved with it. The crowd tends to go a little quiet in a defensive ball game, and they it have. Sure does, Keith. 13-yard line, call it. Tiger McMillan is the one back for the Seminoles. Ward still got it with Kryan looking for him and McCorvey trying to make a catch off the fingers and not good. I think uh, Charlie Ward is getting sick and tired of looking at Darren Kryan and Kevin Patrick. <laughs> I don't blame him. They both have mayhem on their mind and they both weighed 250 pounds. Well, the adrenaline of the uh, first quarter, the first couple of series, has worn off these players, and fatigue is starting to set in. We'll see uh, who wins this fourth quarter. Probably who wins it will win the ball game. Ward is now 13 of 28 for 150 yards. He said two picked off. He hands the ball away this time to McMillan, and uh, McMillan is in the grasp for Mark Caesar, number 99, and he ain't going anywhere because that's a 290-pound anchor right there. No game. You got that fella wrapped around your uh, ankles. You got a pretty good hobble, don't you? Uh-huh. Straight blocking up front. Nothing over there. Tries to get back and Caesar sees it and gets back for the tackle. So it's third and ten. They're playing field position football right now.
Ward ducks away, still ducking away, and finally they get him up around the 17. Charlie didn't go easy, but they did stop him short of the first down. Great effort by Ward. He was sacked about four times. Got out, got some yardage, but not enough. Take a look at the defensive line rush. Patrick loops to the inside. Nobody blocks him. Had a free shot at his fourth sack. And Ward, with his quickness, gets back across the line of scrimmage. And finally, Darren Smith with the tackle. Wimberly to punt. Jonathan Harris is deep. Pressure on that punt. There's the flag. He got the kicker. Paul White going for the block. Got the kicker. The referee threw the flag right at him. And bring home back. First down, Florida State. Huge play right there. From the left side. Paul White, number four. No, no, I don't see anything there. I don't see anything there. Wasn't much. I guess he did hit him a little bit. Where did he hit him? I don't know. All All maybe something. his foot, maybe his foot kicked him in the knee or something, but defense, five yards to be a first down. The, the point is, Keith, the inability of Erickson's offense to create anything has forced him to try and make something happen on special teams. And now you give him a possession. That's like a turnover. You give the ball back to Florida State. The nation's longest win streak at 21 in a row in Division One is on the line here by Miami. And they've won 47 in a row here in the Orange Bowl. Ward keeps it. Let's it go, and it's good to Floyd. William Floyd, the fullback tight end, makes an over-the-shoulder catch. What a big play that is. Advantage Florida State. Another look. This is a turnover. This is like a turnover. Go back to the block. The, the, the punt that was uh, almost blocked. See if his foot hits him at all. Hit the, hit the foot on the ground. Not the kicking foot. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty close call. It is a turnover and gives life to the FSU offense. First down at the Miami 49. Pass is completed to Floyd again. And he's all the way down to the 30. And so William Floyd, who expected to play fullback, is now playing tight end and has suddenly become a persona dramatist. Down the middle passes caught by Clyde Allen. Clyde Allen down at the 20. The ball comes out, and Miami has recovered it. <laughs> 56 gets up slowly. Michael Farrell, he was down in the bottom of the pileup. Darren Smith, 45, was running around with the ball. The number 20 is Allen. He's going to be wide open in the middle of the field. Shallow receivers, Fryer, wide open. Now watch 45. Smith, he's going to knock the ball loose and recover it. That's Darren Smith. Yep. Big play there. So turn it around and go the other way. First down, Miami from the 21. An offense that has been... Very ineffective, much of this ball game. Daniel Ferguson, the true freshman, is in the backfield right now for Miami. Toretta's pass bounced into the ground. Intended for Kevin Williams. Pass protection, a problem all year long. Is that McIntosh, 94? Didn't get the sack, but he forced Toretta to throw it before he was ready to throw. Now Ferguson stays in at the running back position. A year ago, he was playing high school golf with Bob Greasy's son, Brian. 
Second down and 10. Loretta's pass is not intercepted. Oh, we, I don't know, well, it was a bullet that Corey Fuller suddenly had it right in his eyes and uh, he just couldn't close on it. He gave it a tussle, but lost it. That was six points. Here, here he is right here. The route is just going to be down and out in the corner. It's just going to drop back, see the coverage, see the quarterback and drop out to the outside coverage. Dangerous throw. Toretta now 13 of 37 at 176 yards. Throughout the crowd, it was intended for Coleman Bell, and there were three white shirts there. West Virginia and Boston College tie at 24. BC's off a week, and then they get Penn State the week after the Lions have played Miami at State College. Nine punts now with this one for Paul Snyder. Sawyer back. Snyder's averaging uh, 41, roughly 41 and a half yards per punt. Didn't get it to turn over. Gives Sawyer a little room. It's a pretty good return of 18 yards after a 39-yard punt. And Florida State's playing on the Miami side of the field now in the fourth quarter. And even 10 minutes to go in the game. And the Noles are leading 13 to 10. That's the start of the 1983 season, as you'll see here. Miami has run up an awesome record. They were looking to make it an even 100 today, but that matter is very much in doubt right now. Well, they've won two championships in the last three years and four in the last nine years since that 83 season. Well, there's 10 minutes to play, but right now, Mo seems to be wearing a white shirt. Florida State with the ball on the Miami 42-yard line. Ward gives the ball to Tiger McMillan. And McMillan's got the first down. He picked up about 13 yards on the uh, carry to put the ball at the 29 of Miami. First down, we check in with John. Boston College in West Virginia, 28 seconds left. David Gordon, 42-yard attempt, and it's blocked by the Mountaineers. As a result, after a Hail Mary, the game remains tied. It's a final. Both teams stay undefeated. Back to you, Keith. And right here, we've got two unbeaten but uh, looks like one of them may be headed for a lost column. Here's Charlie Ward now checking off, changing his play. He sees the blitz coming. He's checking off. Yep. Miami is still blitzing. He gets the pass away, and it is incomplete intended for Matt Fryer. Fryer got it on his fingertips, but could never put it away under the pressure of Ryan McNeil. Keith, the inability of the Miami offense is now forced the Miami team on special teams and here on defense to blitz and try to make something happen. You can also get burned. Ooh -wee. That's for sure. Marley is in. Rowan Marley, number two. He's the man that's going to go hunting uh, for the Charlie Ward. And Darren Smith comes over to knock Tiger McMillan out of bounds just before he picks up a first down. It's been a very effective play all day as you see Caesar on the ground. Back swinging out of the backfield. Charlie Ward hitting him late. Timeout for Caesar, who has played a pretty good football game. He's been in the middle of the melee all day. Coming up next here on ABC Sports, doubleheader around the country uh, for all of you. Out west, you've got number one Washington against Southern California. Big game in the Pac-10. In the Midwest, you've got number four Michigan at home with Iowa. Uh, you're going to have one free game on television if you so choose through pay-per-view and your local cable operator's cooperation. You can order up the other game and watch them both. Here's where we are in this ball game as we await uh, uh, the injury report on Mark Caesar. 13 to 10 is the score. 
And uh, you can see that Toretta now has fallen well off of his pace, 14 out of 39. Look at that bottom line, though, Keith. Miami, 12 of their 16 possessions have been three plays and out. Caesar being helped from the field. It could be cramps. It could be just plain old-fashioned exhaustion. Third quarter, Texas A&M 10, Texas Tech 7. Fourth quarter, Georgia 20, Arkansas 3. Florida State now comes back to the ball at the 21-yard line, third down and two. Now they put two backs in the backfield. That looks more like the Bobby Bowden offense, doesn't it? They give it to the deep man, the Floyd, William Floyd, and the game eat him up. So Florida State is now three for 15 on third down conversions. 86 in the red jersey is Patrick. Play is inside. He slants to the inside, makes the initial hit, and then the rest of the attacking Hurricanes. And another field goal attempt for Maori. 41 yards this attempt. Into some win. Blocked from 39. Wide left 38. Good from 22 and 38. This is his, to make it a 16 to 10 if he can pull it through there, and he did. 41 yarder is good. 9:05 to play. 16 to 10. Florida State leads Miami. There, sat down on the bench with his defensive teammates. They've rewrapped his right ankle. Doc says he can play. 9:05 to go in the ball game. 16 to 10. Florida State leads Miami. Maori will kick it off. He's in position to hit that high pop-up pooch kick to keep it away from uh, the speedsters. But he hits this one a little longer than he's hit the previous ones, and this gives Spencer a chance to take a hold of it. Get a block on the sidelines and turn on the jets. And a uh, step or so from Spencer. really burning them. So he got a little eager with his uh, kick. Instead of forcing them into a fair catch ball, he gave Spencer a shot at it, and he brought it back across the 40-yard line. 77,338, the crowd today. Toretta and who he's throwing to throwing the ball 37 or 38 times. 11 of them have been caught by wide receivers and not many to the running backs or tight ends. That's where they wanted to go with the ball. They just haven't been successful at it. All right, first down from the 41 to run it back. Throws a homer that is short, incomplete, intended for Coleman Bell. Red is knocked down again. does take its toll on a quarterback Keith even if he gets the ball off if he's getting hit or knocked down each time he throws the ball or every other time that that registers he remembers this five step drop right there throws the ball and that's Palmer 56 just say hello second down and 10 Derek Brooks is back at the ball game after his bout of dehydration Try to run it. Nothing there. Draw play is. I don't know if I have ever seen a draw play work in the last five years against either one of these teams. It all starts with the offensive line. Yep. And that time they were just pushed back into the backfield, Keith. That defensive line for Florida State just dominating. There was no place to go on that draw play. Third down and 12. across midfield and goes down at the 46-yard line of Florida State, and that is a big play. A very big play, Keith. That'll give some confidence to Toretta. He's not been throwing the ball well today. He didn't throw it well last year week against Arizona. He, he said it was his worst game he ever played. Only 14 of 40 now, but when you run, you scramble, you help your team pick up a first down, gives you a new set of downs. That is the longest Miami rush of the day, too, incidentally. 
a 13 yard. Pass going all the way across the field. Caught by Donnell Bennett. And he shoved out of bounds after picking up three yards. So it's second down and seven for the Canes. They've won 47 in a row here. They have a 21 game win streak. It's in jeopardy as Florida State leads 16 to 10, 741 to play in the game. You know, Keith, the, when I was with the Dolphins from 71 to 74, we won 31 games in a row in this uh, building, in this park. It really is a, a, the fans are close. It's like Fenway Park, the old Wrigley Field. They are really getting involved. Hand off to McGuire. Stephen McGuire. He'll get to the 41. That's a pickup of two yards. yards. So here you are looking at that ever present third down again. Third down. Done very little on first down plays. That's the key down too. Anytime you want to, especially against a team that's so tough on third down. I would think this would be a four down area. If they don't make it here, they would go for it on fourth down. It was a struggle for both teams last year up in Tallahassee. It's been a struggle here today. The defense have dominated both last year and this year, and it was Coleman Bell who finally stood above the rest, made a tough catch uh, late in the game to get the Hurricanes a big first down and continue their drive. backs in the backfield. Time out called by Toretta. Didn't have what he wanted. Spends the time out at 6.57 to go. Ibis. And everybody else in the house trying to move it up for the home team here. Florida State leading 16 to 10. Miami owns the football. First down just inside the 34. It'll be officially the 33 yard line of Florida State. They have 12 people on the field. Yeah, little mix up. Substitution late. Oh boy. Gotta hurry up. Get it away just in time. Put it up high. 100. Make the catch. Touchdown. Upland. Toretta is clobbered on the play. It's Lamar Thomas. Lamar Thomas is the hero. Coaching staff holding their breath as Toretta was really busted. He put it up in the air and Lamar Thomas ran it down. That's Abraham, the defensive back. Thomas is 6'3. Abraham is 5'9. The coaching staff knew that. They threw it up. And Toretta's all right. He comes trotting off the field. 16-16 tie with six minutes to play in the ball game. Now enter the kicker, Mr. Pruitt. The score a year ago over in Tallahassee was 17-16. Lamar Thomas, five for 76 now, and that big touchdown. Full open down the sidelines to make the catch at about, oh, what, about 15 yards. He had him not run, didn't he? He did, and he had the size on him, too. He had about six inches, maybe seven inches. Thomas is a leaper. He tied for the Big Ace High Jumping Championship this past spring. He and Copeland tied for that honor. I don't know what the officials are talking about. 
I think it maybe have something to do with all the hurricanes that ran on the field. I'm not sure. Yes. Yep. That's what it was. Too much celebration. Well, that, that's a rule that just falls under. I mean, that's the thing that falls under that rule. What it was was too much celebration. Well, what happened was at the, Went out on the field. about 25 or 30 guys from the bench took off for the end zone, and that's the foul. There's no question about it. Yep. And it will be uh, marked off on the ensuing kickoff. And that just gets Florida State closer to a possible game-winning field There's also field. a discussion here, Bob, about time that ran off the clock because apparently the clock kept on running. Try to sort this thing out. Before the touchdown play, David Bernson according, says, according to the official folks, it was 657, and now it shows 555. Please set the clock to 650. There you go. So we lost a minute, huh? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> clock operator, however, is part of the officiating crew, isn't he? Yes, he is. Dennis Erickson not too happy about that penalty. His team is uh, last in the Big Eight as far as yards penalized. Big East, I'm sorry, as far as yards penalized. Well, as soon as they get the time, they got the time back on the clock at 6.50. Now they got to try to figure out what to do with the ball, where they're going to put it down. Well, and all this, too, is that young kicker, Pruitt, is out there thinking that it's a 16-all game, and I uh, I need to make this kick. Well, they're going to put the ball down and assess the penalty on the kicker. Pruitt. So he gets his shot at Step it on the 10-yard line, which is normal. Snyder will hold it. It's good. to 16 Florida State had led 16 to 10 and then Miami gets the big play from Lamar Thomas and we've got 650 left to play and you've got USC Washington Iowa Michigan coming up blitzing situation man to man on the secondary well, he took a pretty good lick didn't he was Alexander the linebacker Here's what caused the penalty. Now you see Thomas loping through the end zone. Now here comes all the celebration, and that's what uh, triggered the flag and the, the, the penalty and the long discussion and the clock running and all of that. Now those guys were on the offense, but Holloman and all these guys, Shipman, those guys came from the bench. London, yep. he's a, uh, an offensive tackle. It took him a day and a half to get over there. <laughs> He knows what's coming. Yep. He knows you can't leave the bench to celebrate. Well, I think what Dennis was most worried about there was that they might ding him on his horse's kicker back. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think he knows the rules better than that. I guess. Yeah. He puts them. Well, they're not, they're not moving him back yet because he's on the 35-yard line. They're forgetting. They need to move him back. Should come up. Uh, all needs to be backed up. Well, let's set the scene here. Florida State does not need to take it the entire distance. They'll be will be going into some wind. All they need is a field goal. A lot of time. And they've got almost seven minutes to do it. Now we're told that we have offsetting uh, unsportsmanlike unsportsman -like, uh, conduct. conduct penalties. Oh boy. There is no 
foul for unsportsmanlike on Florida State, and it's just a foul on Miami. <laughs> well, that moves the ball back to the 20. The, there was the announcement that it was offsetting, but now the referee corrects that information, and uh, they put it down on the 20-yard line where it should be. And this is a big break now. The special teams for Florida State have been outstanding. They've run a punt back almost for a touchdown and a kickoff back for a touchdown. Their teams have been very good. Miami's coverage has not been good. So he'll kick it from the 20. Van over and McMillan waiting. Pretty good kick. Runs him all the way back inside the 15 to the 14. McMillan up the sideline. It's daylight. He almost got it. But he gives a very good field position out across the 40-yard line. Last year, back in November, which was toward the end of the season, obviously, this was the best field goal by Jerry Thomas of Florida State that preserved the win for Miami, 17-16. They went on to share the national championship with the Washington Huskies. to 17-16 Miami, but circumstance is a little different. The ball is out on the 43-yard line, first down Florida State with six minutes and 42 seconds to play in the game. Charlie Ward. Down he goes. Big sack. Blowing through. Pat Riley. First time I've called his name all day as a big sophomore from Marrero, Louisiana. Seven sacks on Charlie Ward. 43 right over the center. That's McNeil, 69, that picks him up for a second. And then lets him go. He looked around and says, you know, who am I blocking? Offensive line problems. Bowden spoke about it in our in our pregame as well as Erickson. Seven sacks now for the Hurricanes on Ward. Loss of seven yards. an incomplete forward pass and Kamarik Hanover will not get up. Michael Farrell separated him from his senses. Wow. I haven't seen a defensive football game like this in a long time. That's one of those wide receivers wide receiver screens. There you see it. And Barrow has seen a few of those, and he's ready for it. Eight tackles on the day now for Barrow. Here you look at it here. Here's a uh, hand bent over. He's just going to come right down here. Now, the defensive man is going to see it right here, and there's going to be a collision about halfway in between. Lineman coming out, but Barrow sees it. Up. He's a tough kid. Drops off the field. He almost came to Miami. And uh, McNeil, Ryan McNeil, the defensive quarterback that's been covering him, was his host while he was here. McNeil said the other day, it was a nice kid, Van Over was, but I was too hospitable to him then, and I'm not going to be as hospitable to him today. 36 yards. away from the pressure. Wants to go deep. Does go deep. Baker's down there, but he has no chance to get to the ball. And it's fourth down. So a spectacular series for the Miami Hurricanes defense. Defense. Defense, defense. Both teams have just been super on defense. Neither offense has played well. The defenses have been outstanding. Jonathan Harris, John Wimbley involved right here now. Wimbley's 19 the punter, and Harris number three is the receiver for Miami. Didn't get all of it. Fair catch is called by Harris at the 29-yard line. First down, Miami, and let's go to John Sorkin. Keith, an exciting finish in the ACC after NC State missed a field goal that would have won the game. Sean Jones, DeKeenan Walker set up this 
Scott Sisson, 29-yard field goal, his third of the game, and the sixth time in his career he has won a game with a field goal. Now, some upsets in the making, including Texas A&M, number five. They're down to Texas Tech, 14-10. to And Wisconsin leading Ohio State now 20-10 to late in the fourth quarter. Back to you, Keith. That <laughs> crack. <laughs> wow. First down from the 29 for Miami. 39 to play in the ball game, and Donnell Bennett runs it for about three yards. You can't get too conservative. Give the ball back to Florida State because they can hit you from anywhere. But if you're an offensive team, Keith, this is where you need a running game. Yep. You need you don't need any more points. You need to take some time off the clock. Five minutes and 20 seconds. The Hurricanes don't need more points. They need to take some time off the clock. went down to make the catch. He's been hobbling all day, but he found enough to make that leaping, loping catch in the end zone for the touchdown and put him ahead. Those games are still coming up. Trojans and the Huskies and the Hawkeyes and the Wolverines. First down for Miami. 43-yard line. Trying to eat up some clock. 440 to play in the ball game. A one-point lead for Miami now. And here's Jack Aruth. Keith, over my shoulder, you see Tameric Vanover. Now, what had happened to him is he took a very large gash right under his chin. It opened right up, almost like a fighter would get. The trainers have been working over him, and what they've done, they've added three butterfly bandages, closed it up. He's ready to get back in and called upon. He will remember the name Michael Barrow. It'll be in Barrow's personal highlight uh, film, too. Bennett sets up the block, passes away to Copeland. Copeland makes the catch in midfield. They're going to need uh, pretty close to four yards for their first down as Abraham makes the tackle on him. Copeland's another big, long-legged guy at that wide-out position, 6'3", 200. It's tough for a 5'9 guy to handle it. Washington jumping to a 7-0 lead over USC in that ball game early. That's a big game in the back 10. Aggies may get beat. Texas Tech, a lot of people thought they were going to be a tough nut in that conference. Looks like they're showing it today. It's third down, long three. Here they come. Loretta's pass is through to Copeland. He's out of bounds. It is incomplete. They say he did not have possession. Struggle. Man-to-man -man coverage. There's the first down. Good call. Good call. It would have been a first down, and it would have really put Florida State in a box. Here's the snap. High, beautiful kick by Snyder. He better get out. officials conferences in this fourth quarter. <laughs> Joe Ryder, the uh, ump, the uh, uh, referee right there in the white hat, has had some tough calls. Well, the pitch out of the end zone is an illegal play. So that could draw a flag. Well, that could be a safety. It could be a safety. And he's now an offensive man. He is an offensive man lateraling, pitching the ball forward. 
Is it safety or is it touchdown? Well, I think that's what we're talking about right here. Anyway, the Hurricanes are going to get uh, some points out of this. There's an illegal forward pass, which was incomplete. When the ball becomes incomplete, there's a foul in the end zone. It's a safety. Yeah, it's a safety. So instead of it being a flushing, killing touchdown, it is a safety. And it makes it a 19 to 16 score. Corey Sawyer intercepted a pass earlier in the game. Had a punt return and he ran back to set up one of their plays. Catches that ball. Now he's just going to stay there. Now he says, oh, I better run. This man is a sophomore. Now watch that official right there. He's the one that's going to call a touchdown when the ball comes out. Sawyer didn't run the punts back last year. It's Terrell Buckley. Hurricanes get it. It's in the end zone now. He signals touchdown, but it's already been decided. Now Bobby Bowden is saying how many other things are going to happen in this series? How many ways? Bobby many says, you know, that uh, they're psychic. That uh, we've been on the short end of the cycle. Miami's been winning the close ball games, but he's getting the feeling that Miami is involved in the first 20 year cycle <laughs> he's ever seen. <laughs> oh, man. Just made a mistake. He should have never caught the ball. He was on the one yard line when he caught it. Then he knew he was in trouble. And then the young player just threw it out of the end zone. Great talent, but a 19 or 20 year old kid. And so it's 19 to 16 Miami over Florida State. And one of the most uproarious fourth quarters of football you're going to see. The other night that Washington State Fresno game, there was three touchdowns and a field goal made and a field goal missed all in like three minutes and 40 seconds of that game. There have been a lot of these kind of things going on around the country in football this year. It wasn't but a few minutes ago the foul was up in this game, 16 to 10, feeling pretty good. The long touchdown pass to Lamar Thomas. And then the misplay of the punt by Sawyer gave the Hurricanes nine quick points. Well, now a field goal can't win for it. There in lies your up. Mistakes. I'll tell you what, they don't look like two and three in the country. The defense is brilliant, but the offenses are well, in up. It's like we said at the beginning, they've got all the flash and all the uh, glitter. But the defenses have a way of uh, putting a hammer to them. That's a beautiful punt by John Wimberley. Darrell Spencer drops back under a fair catch at the 23-yard line. There by Adam will have the ball. I don't understand that fair catch call. Yeah. He had 15 yards ahead of him. There's offside on the kicking team. Back. They'll take the penalty. You heard Gino Toretta saying, we want it, so let's back them up. Uh, they're punting. And it's a lot easier for that ball to slide off the foot into a shank when you're punting. Of course, you don't have to punt. You can place kick it if you want it. Two minutes and 59 seconds. The play in the ball game. 19-16. Miami next week is headed north to State College, Pennsylvania. And a pretty good sized foe waits up there. Nit the Lions undefeated. Yes, they are. Rolling right along. <laughs> so put the ball back on the 15 yard line now and see where we are. Take a look at Bowden. You know, it's been the last five years. FSU and Bowden have finished in the AP poll in the top four every year. Top four finish the last five years. But Miami has been ahead of them every year. Miami's way up the field. They're not really showing a whole lot of respect uh, for Wimberley. Uh, he got another beauty. That's a boomer. Back to the 24. Here comes Jonathan Harris. 
And a penalty flag might be a face mask there as he's taken down at the 39-yard line. Illegal block in the back on the receiving team. Flags flying, tempers flying, fatigue setting in. It's been a, a total sellout ball game by both sides. Paul White down on the field. He's at the, on the sidelines there. He's had a brilliant ball game. Blocked the field goal, intercepted a pass. Florida State plays after Miami, North Carolina. Both of these teams are going to have to go shopping for some money next week. <laughs> they have spent it all today. Miami's ball back on the 27 now with two minutes and 50 seconds to go in the game. This is Donnell Bennett. And it gets around the corner a little bit and gets something out of it. Well, if you're Miami, you don't want to run out of bounds. You want to keep the clock right. Right. Here's John. USC in Washington, the Trojans' Rob Johnson is picked off by Shane Pahukoa. He takes it down to the one-yard line before his knee touches. It sets up a one-yard touchdown run by Matt Jones. Meanwhile, Michigan leading Iowa 7-0. Most of you will see USC Washington next. Some of you in the Big Ten. Keith. Okay, John. It's a couple of big ball games in those two conferences. And they're coming up next on ABC Sports. We're trying to get some resolution here in... Orange Bowl in Miami. We, uh, we haven't got this thing decided yet. That bullet from Toretta to Lamar Thomas could have been picked off because it whistled just through the hands of Derek Brooks. You need to you need to make first downs, and when your strength is your quarterback and your receivers, you throw the ball with two minutes to go, even when you're three points ahead. This is the way you control the ball. You can't pick it up running. The thing they've told him is just make first downs and then get down and don't fumble the ball. Yep. Coming up on two at the half minutes. 2.20 now. First down for Miami at their 47. Hand it off to the running back. Bennett never really had his feet under it. And goes down. Two, second down and eight coming up. Exactly two minutes to play. Timeouts remaining. Miami has one. They don't particularly want to use it. it looks like they just did. On second down and eight, Florida State, if they get the ball back, will have two. That will be very, very useful. I think FSU just called that timeout, Kate. did they? Yeah. One of the more dramatic scores of the day is that Wisconsin Ohio State Barry Alvarez trying to win a big one in the Big Ten. Ohio State still gloating after that big win up at Syracuse a couple of weeks ago. Let me uh, read something to you out of the rule book. It's uh, snapping and passing the ball. FR 83 item C when an illegal forward pass is incomplete the ball belongs to the passing team at the spot of the pass. Exception to that. If any illegal pass is thrown from the end zone, the offended team may accept the safety or decline the penalty and accept the result of the play. I.e. touchdown. Hello there. But that's academic because the, the play has been ruled uh, a safety and that's the way it's going to go in the books. Now, I don't know whether how this comes to play was that a, I mean this does it have to be a, a forward pass from the snap of the ball the point of play that, well, I can't tell I'm not that right about the rule he did say though it was a, a forward pass illegal forward yes, pass. yes he did second down and eight now for Miami Florida State with two timeouts remaining so they can kill it twice more hoping to get their hands on the ball again see if they spend one here. Yes, they will. So now they've got one left, stopping the clock at 1.51 to play in the game. Timeout. So Mark Comento fetched that rule out of the book. 
But again, it's it's something to know. But then again, it's. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, on your way home, listen to the. We're not down here. And the man down there may be a lot smarter than all of us with all of our rules. CFA football, this ABC sports exclusive brought to you by GEO, the most successful new line of cars and trucks ever introduced. Only at your Chevrolet GEO dealers. By UPS, offering 1030 AM guaranteed overnight air delivery. And by Payne Weber, we believe our most important investment is in relationships. Miami owns the football, third down and eight. A minute 51 seconds to play in the ball game, and Miami is leading 19 to 16. They have a 21 game win streak on the line. They have won 47 in a row in this stadium. Third and eight. Big play here if Florida State is to see the ball again. Loretta's pass for Tom is incomplete. And it's fourth down and eight. And Florida State will see the ball again. Abraham defending on that play. Again, tight bump and run press coverage. Thomas ran a little soft corner there, didn't he? Yeah. Didn't well, the ball was off. still. See, Thomas came inside, and Tretta thinks he was going outside. Yep. Incompletion, though, stops the clock and allows Florida State to use that one. Right a particularly good kick, and it doesn't take a very friendly bounce for mine. And now it gets a little low. It goes <laughs> inside the 20 to the 19. Snyder, he counted 11 seven holes up there, and he didn't care how uh, bad or good the kick was. He just didn't want to get it blocked. Nope. Get it out of there. Kill it down at the 19 yard line. And so, with one minute, 35 seconds to work with, one timeout to work with, 19 to 16, Miami leading Florida State. So hang need, on to what you got. You need a field goal to tie, and that's all they should be thinking about. They don't need a touchdown, they just need to get it down into a field goal range. Well, you get into that same old hassle that goes on. Do you play to tie? Do you play not to lose? Or do you play to win? And I think in this kind of a thing, I'd go for the tie myself if I were to coach. Ward back. Fine after him is cut down hard. The pass thrown down the sidelines. And uh, it is incomplete, intended for Ellison. Number 76. Eric McGill threw a huge block from Darren Price. This is smart on the part of Ward getting outside the pocket. Watch that There's block. a block right there on Price. That's Miami's best defensive back right there, McGill, shutting him down. Second and ten. Ward has the ball tipped, but it's into the yard for Matt Meyer. And it's a gain of about three yards. Clock is running. Minute and ten. The clock stops with a first down. Third down, call it six. Got to move the chains to stop the clock. Ward's in trouble. Cannot take a sack. You cannot. He's gone down, and Darren Klein got that one. If you're a quarterback and you're trying to catch up and play a two-minute offense, you cannot take a sack. An incompletion, throw it away, but not a sack. I tell you what, the MVPs in this ball game for Miami have been Brian Patrick. <laughs> I hate to give it to one man because those two defensive ends have just absolutely been spectacular. Darren Crine for Miami, seven tackles in that last sack. He's the MVP for Miami. Uh, Simpson, the big defensive tackle for uh, Florida State, 
Carl Simpson, a force in the defensive line for the Seminoles. He gets the MVP vote there. Chevrolet contributing $1,000 in the name of those two players to the general scholarship fund of the respective university. And when Krein steps up on the stand to get his award, Patrick, the other defensive end, should be right there with him. Six tackles and three sacks for Patrick, seven tackles and one sack for Krein, and Krein has run that quarterback into Patrick, I mean into a Krein a couple of times. So the defense has been brilliant. Uh, uh, Barrow has eight tackles at the linebacker position for Miami today, and Jones has been equally brilliant for Florida State. It was a big emotional loss for this defensive team for the Hurricanes last week when Rusty Madaris, their emotional leader, went out. Fourth down, 57 seconds. Down the middle, he's got a man, McCarvey, first down for the Seminoles at the 42-yard line. So Ward kept his feet on the ground, kept his eyes moving, and found the man, Kez McCarvey. Big play for the offense. You know, when you have your backs to the wall, sometimes you just come out swinging, and that's what they did on that fourth and long. Got a first down. That'll stop the clock again at 36 seconds. It's now on the Miami side of the field. This dance ain't over. Hurricanes are dropping back in zones and not playing tight man-to-man -man coverage. That may change with this snap. One more play like that, and they're within Maori's range. There's the catch. Brilliant catch by Fryer. Matt Fryer sold out. He's only 5'11", but he extended every sinew in his body to make this catch. You can't play defense any better than that. An outstanding catch and throw. 24 seconds. The ball out to Miami, 25. Ward got some room on the sideline and steps out of bounds. So he used good little bit of time looking around and then they're running out of bounds. Maori is pacing. He had one block, missed 38, but he's made three. 13 seconds time for one more play, and if they choose, the kick. Well, it would be a 39-yard field goal from this point right here. a chance. Eight seconds. It'll be 39 or 40 yards if he's not out there. Do you do it here? Here he comes. Here he comes. Eight seconds. And they're going to try for it. This is the top.
expected it not to be good. That's the depth right there. It's a game. The sun will come up in the morning right on the schedule. Final score. Miami Hurricanes 19. Florida State Seminoles 16. Stay tuned. Coming up. Southern California, Washington. On